Dad Show! We've got a big show lined up for you guys this week. Lots of topics. Of course, the headline. The PlayStation 5 disk drive requires an internet connection? Are you kidding me? Actually hilarious. Is that actually a thing that happened? (laughs) Speaking of actual things that happened, did my LG Wing arrive? And will I be live swapping the SIM from my Note 9 to the LG Wing? Yes, I will. We'll get some impressions from me, some impressions from Luke, who has never touched a wing. No. Not once in his life. What else we got this week? Uh, I don't know if other people are going to find this super cool, but I find it super cool. The IRS pilots direct filing, which is actually a huge deal, actually for everyone. Okay. Okay, Linus. I, right. Look, I know I curated the topics this week. I know it's just oh. really that that's your headline. Though. I think that's huge. That's bigger than Nintendo saying no fun allowed. Yes, because that's just the same thing they always say. Yeah, but it's just it's it's really awful. What about what about carriers turning off people's phones in Mexico? Yeah, let's talk about that. All right, we'll talk about that. Okay. Oh, right. I'm supposed to do that's this. your job. The show is brought to you by Green Man Gaming, Savage Jerky, and UPDF. Why don't we jump right into our first topic? I love that you must have been a little bit offline this week because yeah. it always makes WAN show more fun when I get to get the genuine <laughs> what? <laughs> reaction from you. The new PS5 Slim appears to require an internet connection in order to pair the console to its removable disk drive. This is according to small print on leaked images of the Modern Warfare 3 PS5 bundle. The quote here, and I've actually I've actually got the image that I can bring up for you guys. The quote here is internet connection required to pair disk drive and PS5 console upon setup. So that's in the the font. Yeah, there you go. There it is. What possible justification could there be for this? It says in our notes, this is likely an authentication step after which an internet connection should not be necessary for the device to function. Who cares? But that's a really good question. Who cares? Is the danger that people will find Use injection... like a third-party external disk drive? Yeah. And if they did, would that be such a problem? Yeah. Like, like are, aren't the days of pirated Blu-rays kind of behind us at this point? Is that is that really a major concern? And know. if it was a major concern, wouldn't that happen at such a late stage in the PlayStation 5's life cycle that it is unlikely to be a major problem? Yeah. Like, I just... It seems so weird. I, I don't understand what the difference is between this external drive with presumably... I actually don't even know what interface it's using. I mean, probably... USB? USB? Yeah. I mean, it could be. It could be it just using... It would be using, genuinely hilarious if it was like Ethernet. <laughs> like a, no, like a hot plug SATA, I think, might be more yeah. likely. Uh, E-SATA was a thing for a very, very short period of time. I still don't think it's going to be that. It was super cool, but yeah. it's not like the SATA standard doesn't support hot plugs, so there's no reason that it couldn't actually be serial ATA. But what I'm trying to figure out here is why this would need an extra validation step compared to if, say, for example, you were to swap the internal Blu-ray reader of a regular PlayStation 5. Yeah. Or maybe it, it, maybe it isn't extra. I mean, maybe this is one of those things where Sony, having learned an awful lot about piracy of their games over the last 25 years. When did the first PS, when did the PS1 come out? 96? Let's see. 97? Oh man, I, uh, I, am, I am showing that I do not know my console history here probably. What year was it? 94. Wow, was it that long ago? 30 years of PlayStation just about? Apparently. American debut was 95. That's incredible. All right. Yeah, Japanese debut was December of 94. American debut was September of 95. Wow. So Sony's learned an awful lot from mod chips and people people burning their own PlayStation discs over the years. So maybe this is something that they feel is necessary from an anti-piracy standpoint. But I still have to wonder if... 
the long-term impact of this is ultimately going to be more negative than any possible gain mm. that Sony could get from this. I don't want to be that guy, but I think people are just going to roll over. Roll over? Yeah. What, what do you mean? I don't think there's going to be enough of a splash. Well, oh, okay, no, I agree. I agree with you 100%. But when I say long-term impact, I mean when this PS5 Slim that you ultimately paid more money for, because if you want to get the optical disc add-on, uh, like down the road, you actually end up paying more than the cost of a regular PS5 with yeah. the optical disc drive included, could end up becoming a paperweight in the future if for whatever reason Sony decided to turn off they their turn authentication, off the authentication servers, yeah. servers and yeah. your disc drive dies. And, you know, we kind of go, oh, yeah, but, I mean, what are the odds? that? No, the odds are really good. Oh, I pretty much guarantee that'll happen. I don't know when, but, like... However, now that PlayStations and Xboxes are basically just computers, um, I do think that forward and backward compatibility of games is going to improve a lot. So I don't think that it's a huge deal in the same way that if, let's say... Um, okay, what's a, what's a device that has been notoriously difficult to emulate? PlayStation 3. Okay, like I don't think it's going to be as bad as if a PlayStation 3 required an internet connection and then the authentication servers turned off and there was no way to deal with a broken optical drive because there could conceivably be games that cannot now and maybe can never be experienced in their full proper fidelity without functioning original hardware. But with the PS5, I do, I do see this as being a little bit less likely this is interesting uh seen in floatplane chat suggests that maybe it's the movie studios that are requiring it in some way but i honestly find that pretty hard to believe because it's not like you can't still play back a blu-ray disc in a computer for example you just require licensed software that has the encryption keys with that said i haven't tried to do that in a very long time can you play back uhd like, like the the latest no HDR 4K Blu-rays on a computer? <laughs> I don't know. I know that there's that complicated mess around watching 4K Netflix on a computer. Like you need a platform that supports uh, Intel's you know latest HDCP nonsense and all of that, and you have to use a browser that supports it. Uh, Snowpack in Floatplane Chat says yes, as does loading still. Okay, apparently you can still do it, and you would obviously be able to do that without pairing the disc to the console. But I pretty much guarantee you, at some point when that software is configured, you will need to do some kind of online check. And I do wonder if this is something that is down to movie movie studio pressure. That makes the whole thing make a ton more sense, but it's, I mean, it's no less dystopian. Like you buy a product and so what? Someone else Should decides if you're yeah. allowed to use it or not. Like, no, I buy it, I plug it in. Is all the hardware there? Well, then it should probably work. And that I'm surprised this wouldn't get caught by like a right to repair thing almost. Well, I mean, it is. That's why it's news. Oh. Yeah, people are super mad about it. Or at least they think it's super stupid. I don't know if most people are necessarily mad because here's another thing. And, you know, back to your point about gamers just rolling over for this, like we seem to do for everything, is who runs a PlayStation 5 without an internet connection? Yeah. Like, I think this like, will, as, as stupid as this is, I think it'll affect very few people. Like, well, today, that's the problem, though. Yeah, that's down what's the line, so it's frustrating. It's going to wreck itself completely. When you can't download games for it anymore which will happen, and you can't have this disk drive, it'll literally just be a brick. I am making a poll real quick here because I want to know if people's current-gen consoles are 24-7 connected. So I'm just going to set a two-minute timer on this. Let's run this on Floatplane. So guys, I want to hear from you. Is your PlayStation 5 or your Xbox Series connected 24-7? Let's pull up the results. Okay. Are you guys just... I think just, that's not true. Uh, I genuinely think that's not true. Why do I, I even bother polling you guys? Yeah. I, I, I just it. straight up don't believe that poll at all. Yeah, that's... Uh, they, they Okay, for those who aren't able to see a teeny weeny I think, eye strain vision down there, three out of four are saying yes, connected all the time, and one quarter are saying no, not connected. 
I, yeah, I'm sorry. I actually just don't buy that. Even like more than a quarter. It's 30% right now. Um, I, I, I think that might be some people being like, well, I turn it off and then it's not connected to the internet or something. I don't know. What we mean is like. I didn't say powered. I said connected. I said connected. Yeah. If it's. I mean, yeah, okay, wireless is... Yeah. If it's authenticated, I consider it connected. <laughs> Look, you want to get pedantic or whatever. But they might like, be, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that's not, that's not very useful, you guys. That's not very helpful. Yeah. Um, I never unplug mine from the internet. Yeah, I mean, most, most people wouldn't. Like, the, the idea of... The you vast know, majority of people that own a console, it's either going to be plugged in or it's going to auto-connect to Wi-Fi the second you turn it on. Like the idea of your device only connecting to internet when you need to use the internet is so outdated. We might as well be talking about the PlayStation 1 era at that point, right? Like back when we had dial-up, we had to make a conscious decision to connect to the internet. <laughs> And you like you get all the modem connecting sounds. I mean, ever since broadband, I know I didn't do a good job of that. It's fine. Just get over it. <laughs> ever since broadband, things are just connected twenty four seven because they don't tie up your phone line. So, yeah. if your console is connected at all, I'm sorry, but I simply do not believe you that you explicitly disconnect it and then connect it when you need to use the internet. I actually do not believe you. That would be wild. Yeah. Uh, I saw some people in chat being like, well, I don't have a console. And it's like, yeah. Well, that's not what I asked. The question was only for people that do have consoles. (laughs) Is is your PS5 24-7 connected? No. (laughs) I don't have one. (laughs) Oh, man, you guys. Either way, a vast, 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 I'm assuming over 90% amount of people are going to have uh, when it is powered on and you own one, it is connected to the internet consoles. That's what um, I would say. Yeah, so so you're right. It's not a problem until it's a problem. And who knows? You know, maybe Sony will adopt a, a very different stance towards right to repair <laughs> at some point in the future. And they will, you know, when they turn off the authentication servers for this, they will... They'll do nothing. Yeah, that's that's probably way more realistic. Yeah, that's re- it's really frustrating, and it's not the only thing like this. Obviously, this shouldn't be a surprise, but I was still surprised. Uh, the source here, the sources here are Lewis Rossman and Samsung Mexico, and the headline is carriers block Mexican phones. So there's some background here. Around a fifth of phones in Mexico get bought through the local gray market. Uh, These phones are not necessarily illegally obtained, but the sellers are not authorized and have imported devices that were originally intended for release in other markets. And they tend to sell these at a price that is well below the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Um, If you're wondering, this kind of gray marketing, so it's not the market and it's not the, you know, opposite of the market I, don't, I think the term for that has changed so yeah, I'm just, i don't i don't know whatever the point is it's kind of in between the legitimate market and the illegitimate market in that it's real goods it's not necessarily stolen or you know obtained through nefarious means a blackmail or whatever the case may be but you might be going around intended routes for things so a perfect example of this is something like the discount game keys or windows keys that are accessible through certain gray markets where they will obtain them with actual money that goes to the actual developer but a lesser amount of money because it was intended to be like a a subsidized lower cost version of the software for you know a developing country say for example not for someone who lives in you know the states or mexico or canada or you know whatever else Uh, it's regional pricing is pretty common yeah and so um one of the other major major incentives for gray marketing aside from regional pricing is tariffs So in those cases, um, you could have a real product, a real Intel CPU bought really, really from an Intel distributor, but bought in America and then smuggled through some, you know, 
nefarious means or even not nefarious, even just by, you know, carrying them on a boat and nobody asked any questions. I don't know. Probably something nefarious was involved, especially if we're talking about Brazil, which is where I'm going with this. But they could be smuggled into Brazil where the tariffs on electronics are, I think, as high as like a hundred plus percent, depending on the category, making, you know, a gaming computer, for example, an extreme, extreme status symbol somewhere, somewhere like, uh, somewhere like Brazil. So there's a strong incentive to gray market these products, buying them legitimately, but transporting them illegitimately so that they are somewhat affordable. Um, so anywho, we've got these gray market phones. In July, Motorola announced that phones imported through the gray market and activated in Mexico would be subject to remote disability after July 27th, making the phone completely useless except for emergency calls. Reportedly, they are planning to ident or they are identifying these phones via their IMEI number, which is a as, as far as I can tell, as far as I know, and I'm sh okay. I don't spend a ton of time hanging out on Russian hacker forums, so you'll have to forgive me if I if I am not up on the latest, um, you know, IMEI spoofing techniques. But as far as I know, there it, it is pretty much hardware, and there's not any kind of easy, convenient, accessible way to spoof an IMEI. Do you do you know is that is that true? Uh, I think you can, but I don't think it's like easy or accessible at all and i don't think it's bulletproof like you might be able to spoof it maybe the like the way that it appears in your software maybe. but my I, understanding I've, is it's pretty low level i've heard of it before but i don't know like i'm, I'm trying to look you up right now but i don't know how legitimate these things are float plane um, chat is saying it's hard but you can okay yeah yeah that, that was my understanding so, but well, it's been a long time yeah uh genesis describes it as doable but far beyond most people yeah like i don't think this is a thing that's going to be done widespread even at a scale like this like, well yes and no i mean if one sometimes. fifth of yeah. the phones in a country yeah. St just stopped working. You don't think mobile repair shops, you know, those ones that are absolutely well, everywhere, are going to figure out how to do this? We're and talking about how this is a gray line, too, and some people in chat are pointing this out, and I think this is true. It is illegal, I think. Wrong. You can rewrite IMEIs on Android devices. Um, yeah, but I, is it legal? That I don't know. Also, how is that wrong? <laughs> Didn't we just say you could do it? Yeah, we know. Well, we uh, they might be they might be behind. Maybe their internet oh, connection is, uh, is is not very good. Yeah. But um, anyway, the point is, it also depends on how they're handling this. I mean, what if Motorola's approach is to have just an allow list of IMEIs? Well, then, yeah, yeah sure, you'd spoof it or whatever, but that's not going to help. Yeah. You'd have to find the right one. Yeah, exactly. And if and if two IMEIs, um, if two sus. identical IMEIs show up, particularly on the same mobile network, <laughs> that is yeah, definitely going to cause some problems. Yeah. So it's so it's not legal. So if they're if they're trying to like float in the gray space, that is as far as my understanding goes, a clearly illegal action. Got it. I think that would be like, ooh. We're getting into laws that I don't know, but I think that would be like changing the VIN on your car. Right. Like, I don't think you can just do that. Like, yeah, I know you can't do you that. Could, yeah, you could visually do it. Yes. But it's like not okay. It's definitely not okay. Yeah. So I think or it's like the changing same. the serial on a firearm or something like that. Like nothing would physically prevent you it's doable. from doing it. It's going to be hard to do convincingly, yeah. probably similarly to here. Yeah. And it's illegal. So it, you're not going to see a ton of it. Not legal advice. We are not lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> not financial advice either. Burn all your money. Wait, sorry. Not that, really not really just advice at all. Yeah, we, <laughs> this is not an advice show. That is not what the A in WAN stands for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nobody really knows what it stands for. No, it doesn't matter. It's as far canon is that it never stood for anything. <laughs> now get this. Samsung went even further and started disabling gray market phones retroactively. Oof. What? 
That sucks for the people that bought them. Uh, okay, this must be a typo because it says both companies offered affected customers a 30% discount on Motorola devices in Mexico, <laughs> but I'm sure that's just Motorola and maybe Samsung also offered some kind of maybe. discount. Maybe. Uh, Oppo and Xiaomi also said they would block gray market phones in Mexico, but it's unclear whether they followed through. Interesting. Now, one of the motivations that, you know, my, my imagination could conjure up for something like this might be that this was due to government pressure, because otherwise, why Mexico? Why all these manufacturers? Why now? Like, maybe this is one of those things where, okay, organized crime is involved in the, mm. in the, 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 the acquisition and resale. And, yeah. and you know, the, any money spent on these gray market phones is going straight into the cartels or whatever the case may be. But actually, the Mexican government um, has ordered manufacturers to stop disabling regular phones and called for the creation of a working group to address the gray market problem without violating consumers rights because the thing here is that the only people who are being harmed by the manufacturer's actions are the buyers of these devices not the people who profited from it and if you expect the average consumer to understand that the phone that they're buying, which looks exactly the same as the other phone just like it, other than it has a slightly more different serial number that is not authorized for use in this country, if you expect them to understand or even care that that's wrong compared to saving a hundred bucks or whatever it is, I just, I think it's kind of ridiculous. I think it's, I think basically all you're doing is making yourself look bad and you are not harming the sellers. I mean, in the long term. Hold on though. One of the next lines, uh, cause I was just reading one of the sources here is like Samsung Mexico. And I was just reading this and I was like, this doesn't line up with what we're saying at all. But one of the next lines is yes. the Mexican government has ordered manufacturers to stop disabling a uh, regular phones. I said that you weren't listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> Neat. I was probably reading it. Anyway, cool. uh, getting ahead of uh, moving ahead again. So, um, so the, the, in the long term, I could see this hurting the resellers once people kind of figure out that these phones might not work. Uh, but unless they're disabling them immediately, I could still see them, you know, selling these devices, not you know, connected to a mobile network, just kind of going like, okay, yeah, look, look, it's, it's working. Take, take it home and go taking people's money. Like I, it, you're, I think you're just going to end up with regular consumers being scammed. Um, now Samsung claims they will no longer block these phones and they are willing to work with the government on a solution leading us to our discussion question here, which is what's the right way for companies to deal with gray market devices. I, I don't know if I would say no longer, uh, they said they're going to suspend blocking them. <laughs> Hilarious. So they're 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 pausing. They're they're pausing and allowing uh, some work to happen with the Mexican government to see if they can come to some form of agreement. And it sounds like if they don't, they'll probably continue. But they didn't say that part because they probably didn't want to like put a threat out there. But the word suspend to me sounds like there's a resume on the other end of it. So yeah, I'm not sure. So what should they do about gray market devices? I have an idea. How about nothing? How about f off? How about if you can afford to sell it at that price in, you know, wherever a stand, then you just sell it at that price. There's an idea. You're welcome. Nice. Like, I, I, I don't know. It, 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 this just, it just reminds me of like it's region very, locking. Yeah, it's a very consoles and, and games. And, and like, you know, obviously the, in the early days, the region locking wasn't very sophisticated. It's a, you know, a, yeah. a plastic notch that Flip you can just switch. sand down or whatever the case may be. But I guess now that we've reached the point where the mechanisms for enforcement are so sophisticated, we've reached the point where we kind of have to say, hey, actually, no. That's not okay. Well, it's at all you, you can't be you can't be bricking manufactured goods just because it went from one country to another country in a way you didn't like. I'm sorry, but I just don't really. Um, yeah, I don't I like can't the really bricking. Support that. I, I I think I could potentially support them wanting to do something about it, um, but bricking the phones is really aggressive towards people that just want your phone, not 
the resellers doing the actual bad stuff um because like i can understand like they they might not be making money in some of these markets like at all and those markets might be supported through the sales in other markets like we don't necessarily know how their business is being handled um but yeah breaking all the phones is not cool i mean that you know raises another interesting question like should should we then okay should should i should i be supportive of them selling devices at cost into a developing market, knowing that I'm helping subsidize that. You don't have to be supportive of it. So then if I'm not supportive of it, then I guess I would take my stance, which is sell the device for whatever, you know, your cost is plus some margin that you presumably need to make and then f off and don't tell me where I can or can't use it. Fair enough. I, either way, I don't support them bricking the phones. I think that's a... And I don't, don't really, approach. I don't really see an alternative. What, what is the alternative? Because anything. In Brazil, we actually pay more. That's because of your. Yeah, that's because of your, your government. Tax. Yeah, that's not the company. Yeah. Yeah, that's. So to be clear, we are not talking about um, situations where the increase in cost to the consumer, the increase in price to the consumer is because of uh, import tariffs or taxes. Yeah. That's on the government and, you know, that's, that's always going to, that's always going to be something that smugglers are going to try to get around. And that's always going to be a certain kind of gray market. We're talking about situations where the manufacturer has their own set regional pricing that they are trying to prevent people from working around it's super, by breaking devices. It's super visible in video games. Yeah. It's a big thing for a while. People, people would like sell accounts like free accounts that were authenticated in countries where they would get the games cheaper because you'd pay money for the account, but then all the games that you'd buy after that would be cheaper. Like there was all this like crazy stuff going on. <laughs> um, there, there's, yeah, it's, it's weird. I remember hearing, I don't remember what game it was, but it was some online game that required a subscription and you could go into the online dashboard and update your address to one of the countries that had a, a lower subscription rate. Uh, subscribe with uh, like an American or whatever else credit, credit card, card yep. and everything. Just you switch your address to there, subscribe, you buy like however many months at a time, and then you just change your address back and everything's fine. Like they didn't have any authentication <laughs> at all. I've had a couple people just that I, whose comments I've seen, I don't even remember, emails, forum posts, I don't know, uh, but have brought up that they subscribe to YouTube Premium in a different region and it costs like two dollars a month or something yeah. like that and you'd yeah. think a company with the technical would resources of google would be able to detect something like that pretty easily especially because i know that when someone doesn't want you to buy something from a different region they f***ing can stop you like do you have any idea how hard it was to buy a valve index yeah, I remember this. Valve yeah. was serious business. You are not buying an index if you are not in you know America or wherever the other regions that they launched it in were. And it's like, well, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I need an index. I have to f***ing review the thing. So I will obtain one. But the only way I was able to do it, I tried shipping to an American address with a Canadian card. I tried shipping to a Canadian address with a USD card. I tried shipping to an American address with a USD card that was issued by a Canadian bank and they wouldn't even allow that. I was paying in US dollars and shipping to a US address. Why do they care? And it wouldn't go through. And ultimately, you know how we did it? I've gotten around a few of these, but no. Uh, we, ha we had John. We had our, yeah. our writer who lives in, Car uh, I was going to say in Carolina, but I'm sure, it, I'm, sh I, I'm sure that that it would was. be very offensive. Yeah. Uh, well, I, well, I didn't want to get super specific, yeah. but that's fine. It's a state. North Carolina. He lives in North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, I, I know there are two Carolinas. Just chill. Relax. Yeah, north it's and just, east. Yeah, it's just like East Arkansas and West Arkansas. <laughs> Does he know American geography? <laughs> Or does he not? <laughs> You'll never know. It's a stalemate. Um, <laughs> so in a chat, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, don't forget about don't forget about red Texas and blue Texas. <laughs> There's Austin and Dallas and the rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> That's okay. I know the Alaska thing. Wait, which hand is it? Is it this one? It's like the, the state of Alaska is the shape of the back of your hand when you do this with your fingers. Oh, okay. But I don't remember which hand it is. Uh, well, it's... Hold on. Can I see? Uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, it's that one. There you go. I just know the shape of Alaska. That's uh, not because I, like, remember which one it is. Why uh, do you not know the shape of Alaska? It's attached to Canada. Well, it has two thingies, and I just didn't remember which one was longer. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> anywho... As a Texan, this is correct. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> right. How to deal with this. I don't think there's a good way to deal with this. I, I just don't think there's any way around it. I think the answer is give yeah. up. Just don't break phones. Yeah, stop it. Breaking phones sucks it's for everyone. It's time to stop. You're making e-waste and... Bothering your customers. Stop. Who, yeah. Who did buy your product. Yeah. You actually did sell that product and yeah. you make money. So if you didn't make enough money... I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. If I set a higher price next time. I don't care. Deal with it. All right. What are we doing next, Dan? Oh, uh, well, you still got 15 minutes left before we have to talk about merch messages, but we could just talk about merch messages. Yes. Let's talk about merch messages. <laughs> that can be next. I can't do it until you move the, the sign. Okay. It's impossible. It's actually not allowed. Oh, it's thank illegal. Thank you for freeing us. Yeah, otherwise, they'd be gray market <laughs> merch messages. <laughs> gray merch. Somebody. Somebody got a three over I here. I think all merch messages are gray market. Authentic merch, merch messages that were imported uh, I I illegally. These yeah. are handmade artisanal signs. Oh. They are not. They're printed. Oh well, my side is. No, I'm proving it. I. I. Uh, mm. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. I. Why did is that. it me? <laughs> Hi, Luke. Hey. What are we using this for? Bye. Oh, uh, wait. No, complicated. Uh, uh, you're revealing the wall that no one's supposed to be able to see. Yeah, but this side. <laughs> I still love how the most interesting wall no one ever sees. And then, like, probably the most boring one is one people see all the time. It's still amazing to me. You're not wrong. I forgot that you guys also looked at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Merch hit messages. me, Dan. Uh, you got to tell me what they are. Merch messages? Oh, right. Explain. Merch messages are the way to interact with the show. Yeah. Don't send super chats. Don't send Twitch bits. Send merch messages. It's great because not only do you get to throw money at your screen so that strangers on the internet can, you know... Build a wall that nobody ever people, looks at. People are saying super chats and Twitch bits are gray market merch messages. <laughs> I mean, it's more the other way around. Yeah, it kind of is, actually. Uh, <sighs> but, but legitimate, legitimate. Um, yes, yes, yes. So what's better about them is that you can throw money at the screen and help out your favorite creator. Us. Yeah, uh, obviously. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. And get your order in the mail. Yeah. So to send a merch message, all you got to do is go on lttstore.com, pick up something awesome. We actually have a bunch of really good deals going on right now. Some new products, uh, a pretty crazy promo on our plaid flannels. Uh, so you just got to pick something up, and in the cart, you will see a box to leave a merch message, and it'll show up down there, or producer Dan might respond to you, or uh, forward it to someone else internally to get back to you, or even curate it so that Luke and I can address your question on the show. So Dan, why don't you show us how that works? Sure, I got one here. With AMD releasing the Threadripper 7000 series for DIY users, do you think AMD will continue releasing processors for DIY users? Or do you think it will flip right back to OEM only, despite Intel? Okay, this question requires a little bit of background. Um, Luke, how up on the Threadripper shenanigans that AMD has pulled are you? They did it. Everyone was stoked on it. They weren't going to do it anymore, and then they did it again. Okay, that's a very, very succinct summary, but not a very accurate one. <laughs> okay. So why don't we improve on that a little bit? Uh, I'll, I'll give you guys a bit more background. <laughs> Threadripper <laughs> launched alongside, or I think shortly after, the original Ryzen 1000. It was the same Ryzen chiplets, but many, many more of them. And I believe the first generation went up to, I want to say, 16 cores, or was it 32? Uh, whatever the Threadripper uh, 1950X was. Let's have a quick looky-boo. No information available for this page. 
Um, I th- oh man, now I'm not gonna get it right. I jinxed it. Nice and succinct, Linus. I I jinxed it. I think yours the isn't 19- succinct or accurate. Okay, I think the 1950 was uh, 16. Okay, was there was there a 1970 though? This is this is like gray market. Uh, okay, Threadripper can, information. Can you can you gray not. market tech tips? Can you not? <laughs> Threadripper was okay. a CPU. No, I was accurate. I was accurate. The first family went up to 16 cores in it, the 1950X. Okay. What was cool about Threadripper was that compared to consumer platforms, it had mondo memory bandwidth and a ton of PCIe connectivity. Compared to server platforms or traditional workstation platforms, it didn't support nearly the same amount of system memory, which was considered kind of a, an Achilles heel, because you had all these cores. 16 cores in the 1000 series, up to 32 cores in the 2000 series, which ballooned to up to 64 cores in the 3000 series, which is flippin' wild. But the 3000 series, if I recall correctly, was limited to, I want to say, 256 megabytes of system memory. So you had all this bandwidth, you had all this PCIe connectivity, you had all this compute, but you couldn't attach that much RAM to it, which was AMD's way of ensuring that they would have a way to differentiate their workstation and their server products from their enthusiast Threadripper products. Now... As we made our way from uh, 1000 series Threadripper to 2000 series Threadripper to 3000 series Threadripper, some stuff happened that was a little bit different from how AMD handled the consumer side of things. The first two Threadrippers were on Socket LGA... Oh, balls, I can't remember. Hold on. Um, Yeah, okay, this, like summary article that I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, Socket STR4. And while on the consumer side of things, we got Ryzen 1000, 2000, 3000, all on the AM4 platform. In fact, all the way up to Ryzen 5000 stayed on the AM4 socket. For Threadripper, that actually changed when they went to Zen 2 with Threadripper 3000. And we got Socket TRX4. Now, the problem with that is that AMD committed at that time, hey, we're sorry for changing away from socket S, uh, socket TR4 and moving over to TRX4. Um, our bad. We, we know we want to have better socket continuity than Intel, and all we managed to do was Zen and Zen Plus on this one. Uh, we're going to do better next time. And then they promptly did not do better at all. Not only did we not get any new CPUs for that um, socket. So oh, not only did they change sockets on us, but we never got a single CPU upgrade for that platform. Threadripper 3000 never got a follow-up. And from my understanding, based on leaks, uh, based on rumors that I have personally participated in, it's not because they weren't done. They were basically done, the product. So updated Zen 3 chips for uh, STRX4, and they just didn't release them because it wasn't nearly as profitable as releasing workstation or server chips under the Threadripper Pro branding, which would come later, actually, two and a half years later on uh, socket W for workstation WRX8. So what we got was Threadripper 1000 on STR4, Threadripper 2000 on STR4, Threadripper 3000 along with a big boatload of broken promises on STRX4, and then we got Threadripper 5000 Pro only on that workstation platform. And they just never bothered with Threadripper 5000 non-pro, which was a giant loogie in the face of everyone who invested in STRX4, like me, to the tune of like a dozen workstations expecting to have upgrades available for it, which never arrived. Because for video editing, we do need a fair amount of system memory, but we don't need more than... (laughs) 
I forget if it was 256. I think it was 256 gigs of RAM. That's actually lots for us. We're not doing simulation work or or uh, AI uh, or AI work or you know anything like that. It's it's plenty for video editing. We just want the performance and we want the PCIe connectivity so we can plug in uh, extra devices like high speed you know fiber optic network cards and stuff like that. Um, so what was the question again? Right. I'm still not certain if what I said was actually incorrect. I think it was just way too short. Yeah. So I didn't realize we were doing like a whole history. Coming back to something. Anonymous's question here. With AMD releasing Threadripper 7000 for DIY users, not just for, you know, workstation integrators, do you think AMD will continue releasing these processors for DIY or do you think it'll flip right back to system integrators only? Oh yeah, there was a short period of Threadripper Pro where it was system integrators only. You couldn't even buy them more broadly, but 5000 you could buy, assuming you could afford them because they went up to like $8,000 when the previous ones were not that expensive because they were meant for consumers. Um, the answer is, I don't know. Yeah. Because they're lying assholes. <laughs> the fact that AMD gets a free pass from enthusiasts for, you know, being an underdog or whatever is it's baffling to me. They're also a company. They're also interested in one thing, just like an Intel or just like an Nvidia. I think they're I think they're or I shouldn't say just like an Nvidia. Nvidia's got their own sort of they have a particularly brazen um, manner of pursuing actively and openly like dislike a large section of their consumer base. Uh, okay. So this is one of those things that's complicated. Every time we kind of get into this, it's like, okay, <laughs> corporately, I agree with you, Yeah. but I've met so many passionate oh, not, individuals. Not individually, no. Yeah, and okay. I have as well, for sure. Yeah. I know some people in video that are, that are great people, but <laughs> just like the, the corporate actions, the business actions are, yeah. Yeah, so I just, we just need to not, we just need to not believe them. I mean, we can, you know, when we, when we do a video about it, if AMD says, you know, yeah, we're going to support this socket for several generations and we're going to do this and we're going to do that, you know, we'll, we'll tell you, hey, they say that, but we're also not going to ignore those broken promises from the past. And I think AMD has shown that they are capable of doing short run processors like those uh, those cool X3D chips that they that they dumped a while ago at Micro Center and and somewhere else I forget who had them in stock like it is conceivable that they could offer an upgrade to Threadripper five uh, Threadripper three thousand users still but they they won't they don't wish to um, and I don't know I'm just uh, I'm I'm very frustrated the good news is that. These days, I, I do also kind of get it. Now that we have consumer chips that are anywhere from 16 to 24 cores, depending on whether you're on the Intel or AMD side of things, I think the necessity of a high-end desktop platform is, is less. But I am also glad to see them make a return, even if I don't have a lot of trust that they will continue to support it. There, that is my answer. Amazing, amazing. LLD, do you see a time when storage servers will just be filled with hundreds or thousands of M.2 drives, providing petabytes of ultra-fast storage in a 1 or 2U rack? Already exists in some cases, doesn't it? I'm on it. <laughs> okay. There you go. There it is. So these are super cool. These are like these tiny little slim, cute SSDs um, that you would equip a server with, you know, any, anywhere from typically, typically a, a handful to dozens of SSDs. Uh, right now, the challenge is fitting enough compute in that same form factor that you can actually make full use of these things. But I do, I do wonder if you are, if you are right, that we may see a, a future where we don't worry so much about having enough compute and we just accept that the performance is going to be kind of crap. And we just <laughs> pack a ton of these in because up until now, NVMe SSDs for, for the data center have been, You've got these branches where they are focused on performance or they're focused on capacity, but even the ones that are 
capacity oriented are still, you know, pretty darn good performance. But I think as we make our way into storing more and more and more bits per cell, we could end up with some extremely cheap per gigabyte NAND flash. And we could end up with servers that, like you suggest, might allocate as few as, you know, uh, a single PCIe lane per multiple SSDs and just cram them in in an effort to go for capacity. Hopefully um, you're not accessing all those particular ones at the same time. Yeah, and you almost never would. Yep. Right? Like it's. I'm not completely against it, especially for certain use cases. Like, if you know what you're getting into, like. Someday for bulk storage, yeah, I, I, I could see it being somewhat realistic. But I also do wonder if, you know, by the time you're architecting such a specialized device, if you would be better off just architecting a, an SSD that just stacks way more NAND packages on it and then you don't need all that PCIe because PCIe is going to be one of the biggest cost drivers of that entire solution, especially if you have to do any PCIe switching. So if you're, like I, like I had suggested, taking a single PCIe lane off of, you know, let's say an AMD Epic platform. So dual CPU, you would have 160 lanes. So you could do up to 160 you know, theoretically, if you had absolutely nothing else, right? Like no network card, which is not realistic, but let's just bear with me here, okay? So you could do up to 160 SSDs off that thing if they were one lane each. Yeah. Well, you could quadruple that if you, if you, you know, put a, a PCIe by one uh, switch on it and put, you know, four SSDs behind it. Like you said, you wouldn't get full bandwidth from all four SSDs at a time, but you'd be so parallelized at that point that I just have a hard time imagining that that would be a problem unless you are divvying up the resources of that system hardware by hardware to cloud customers or something like that, where, yeah, conceivably two customers on the same PCIe Quite switch yeah. could be hitting their SSD at the same time. But if you pooled all the storage and then just allocated it in chunks... I think it's very unlikely to be a problem with that amount of overall bandwidth available. We're talking 160 lanes of Gen 5 on the latest Epic platforms. It's it's, it's unfathomable. Every once in a while, amounts of bandwidth. But like, I suspect if the use case is right, I suspect you could get it to a point where the amount of issues that you have are so infrequent that they're not that big of a deal. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. And so you know, that's that's one possibility. But those PCIe switches would be costly whereas i think that if you were if they would be costly per unit whereas if you were to develop a new ssd that just loads you know terabytes upon terabytes of terabytes of of nan flash like like we uh we covered that 100 that 100 terabyte ssd a while back on the channel clearly it's been done well that engineering gets done once and then every unit is just cost of NAND chips. You don't have to put a bunch of PCIe switching, though. I think that SSD might have actually used some switching internally. Uh, the point is, I think there's there's going to be solutions uh, for stuff like this in the future, but hard drives are still a more cost-effective way to do yeah. bulk storage. I think they're going to be for a while. And the rest. only way that you would use something like you're suggesting would be for bulk storage. You see they're shipping Seagate announced 28 terabyte drives um w wd also has 28 terabyte drives now i'm just trying to imagine a scenario that's actually insane where i would want 28 terabytes of data at the mercy of a hard drive man so the the iron wolf pros i think five years ago were 10 terabyte drives and iron wolf pros are now 22 terabyte drives that's crazy <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> wow. Right Sheesh, man. Yeah, I just, I, 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 um, every time I, I, there was a while there where hard drives were kind of still could be worth a premium for the top mm. capacities and, and still had some sex appeal, even though your boot drive was probably an SSD if you were an enthusiast. But now, it has become so easy for me to completely ignore hard drives for I still like a, hard drives. A year at a time. And so I'll turn mm. I'll so I'll turn away and I'll turn back and I'll go what the sh there's 28 terabyte hard okay. drives now? Yeah. And like 
uh, okay, like what's the what's the pricing of uh, okay here? What's the pricing of a of a twenty two terabyte hard drive? Like like that's that's four twenty. Nice. Um, <laughs> I I just want to say one really quick like what? aside. Um, this is very off topic, but I just saw the art for this. Hard drives are getting like the old school GPU treatment. Like that looks sick. It's like unnecessarily cool for a hard drive. You know, my understanding is um, the person who was responsible for WD's green, black, they're doing this blue, now. Because uh, that was really good branding. Moved over to Seagate. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same person. So believe it or not, uh, Seagate has color coded drives now. I think. <laughs> um, oh, uh, maybe they're not color coded. Either, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not sure if they're color-coded. I don't think they're color-coded in the same way that the WD ones are, but no, the Iron not. Wolves are red, and this Exos thing is green. I think there's some amount of, like, grouping logic behind it, which I think is fine. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That just goes unbelievably hard for... Um, oh yeah, they're definitely color-coded. It's blue for surveillance, red for NAS, um, green for Exos for Enterprise, and then ugly for everyone else i guess <laughs> <laughs> all right you can update that one maybe come on sick <laughs> make that one a little cooler man it's amazing how hard it is i think the iron wolf branding is so sick to too. find anything on new egg that is just a product what's the surveillance one what is the name of the exos iron wolf and then what's the surveillance one skyhawk oh so sick! Oh no, Sky, just... Skyhawk AI. Whoa! They're AI drives. That's worse. <laughs> Skynet. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't understand how like hard drive branding is going way harder than GPUs these days. Like that's crazy. I don't know. It's kind of sick. I just, how far GPUs have fallen. The GPU art, both on the box and the card, used to be so cool. And now it's just like metal and fan. Well, that's because of NVIDIA. Yep. It's actually because of NVIDIA. NVIDIA yep. maintains very tight control over the packaging and branding of their partners. And it's so boring! <sighs> Next topic. Speaking of boring, why don't you pick a topic? I'm going to do it. IRS pilots direct oh! filing. <laughs> Okay, I, I did actually. You walked me into that topic. one. I know, I know. This is great, though. It, uh, if you're not excited about this, maybe you haven't paid taxes yet. Uh, in 2024, an IRS pilot program will allow residents of 13 states to electronically file their tax returns for free directly with the IRS. This goes against the wishes of tax preparation companies who have been lobbying against free direct filing for over a decade, arguing that free alternatives are already available, which is technically true. In the most BS way ever. Those free alternatives arose out of the Free File Alliance, a 2001 partnership between the IRS and several tax preparation companies to offer taxpayers with simple returns a free alternative for filing their taxes. A later investigation by ProPublica found that several companies made those options purposefully difficult to find in order to trick their customers into paying for services they could have received for free. Uh, this has been somewhat recently uh, called Dark Patterns. By a bunch of people, including us. Um, <laughs> they're, they're called dark patterns. Yeah. I think that's a newer term, though. Uh, is it? I don't think it's that new. It's not like this year new, that's for sure. I've only heard it within the last few years. Um, I might just be late to the party. I think you're late to the party. It's very possible. <clears throat> Anyways. Well, uh, you user experience designer Henry Brignall coined the neologism... Neologism? Neologism. I don't, I'm not, not familiar with that word. On 28th of July, 2010. So we've been calling them dark patterns for over 10 years. Okay. I definitely didn't hear about it in 2010. This is fun. In 2021, the Electronic Frontier Foundation and Consumer Reports created a tip line to collect information about dark patterns from the public. That's cool. Disclosure, I am plagiarizing this from Wikipedia. Cool. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, this is amazing. There's classifications of patterns. One of them is called privacy zuckering. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> Whoa. Is that like, that's, that? wait, hold on. That's like a government recognized term? I, I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you guess what it is? You know what? Let's play a game. I'm going to read different kinds of dark patterns and you're going to tell me what you think they are. Okay. Are we starting with privacy zuckering? Oh, we're definitely starting with privacy zuckering. Uh, getting people to give you their information in exchange for very little or nothing. Tricks the user into sharing more information than they intended to. Okay. All right. Good name. Uh, okay, I, we'll go with a couple of the more <laughs> straightforward <laughs> ones here. Good Zucker. Misdirection. It's just called misdirection? It's so called misdirection. Uh, would this be like uh, the download buttons problem? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you nailed it. So, uh, you know, basically presented with a button in the fashion of a typical typical continuation button, uh, but it's actually something else, and you have to look somewhere else for the one. Like, if you noticed when Microsoft offers you the Windows 11 upgrade, you have to, like, hunt for... For the don't do it? Yeah, for the don't do it. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, okay. The next one is called confirm shaming. <laughs> oh, okay, so that would be when the when the prompt is like uh do you want to continue your subscription click the click the yes i want to keep supporting this company or do you not want to continue your subscription click the no i'm a horrible person button nailed it okay. yeah uh well, don't forget the bait and switch hmm what's on that one uh it's it's it seems like you're signing up for something that's awesome and cool and legit and then you're not or maybe it sounds like it's free and then after you've given them your contact information, they prompt you to put in a credit card or something? It's, it's, you're really close. It's, they advertise something free or at a greatly reduced price, then say it is unavailable and uh, present similar options at higher prices or lesser quantity. Okay. And the last one is Roach Motel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've actually heard of this, but I don't remember at all what it is. Um... No, yeah, I don't, I don't know. This one provides I've an easy one. path in, but a difficult path out. Got it. So, for example, a business that would require subscribers to print and mail their opt-out or cancellation request. Yeah, or like Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is full of different kinds of dark oh, patterns. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I completely hijacked whatever very interesting thing you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was unintentional. With, with the, with the, <laughs> <laughs> it was a dark pattern. <laughs> Uh, when the IRS banned these uh, these companies from hiding their their free filing options, both H and R Block and Intuit, the makers of TurboTax, left the agreement, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, I personally really enjoy the process of um, the government sending me a letter that tells me what I need to put in the box of the piece of paperwork that the government sends me. Um, I think that's the dumbest thing ever. I do think, obviously, some people are going to have more complicated taxes, but for a vast, yep, for sure, for a vast uh, percentage of, the, technically, yes, me as well, <laughs> but for a, for a vast percentage <laughs> of the population, uh, it's pretty simple and it's really stupid that you have to jump through so many hoops. Um, that if you are, have one full-time job, yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. You should be paying zero dollars to process your tax return. Yeah. You shouldn't even like do it. You should basically just confirm. It should be presented to you. Well, be like, does this look wrong? I mean, okay. Actually, I was, I was going to say, I mean, there's a lot of things that could conceivably need user intervention. Like if you have deduc deductions for a sure. dependence or something like that. But then I'm sitting here going, well, I mean, what's the point of the census if they don't know how many kids you have? Yeah. Like what, what was the point of the birth certificate? Yeah, and it, that it you... can be an opportunity to update things. Yeah, like sure. But yeah, no, you're, no, you're right. Just like confirm this information you know is still what? correct. Cool. We missed out on a, it's like a, I yeah, don't know. People in chat are saying that's how it works in the UK. Yeah. P countries do this. Like this is not impossible. We missed out on a, I forget how much money it is. It's either hundreds or thousands of dollars. It's a significant amount of money um, that you can put towards your kid's post-secondary education, but you have to apply for it before their second birthday or something. And <sighs> we missed the deadline. And so you just don't get it. And I'm sitting here going, well, this should just be automatic. There was some. What is the... There was something when I was growing up where if you put money into an account before you were, I think it was 16, the government would like match it or something. And it was for your post-secondary education. But if you were 17, 
you or what you're not allowed to save for post-secondary anymore if you're in post-secondary they don't want to support you in post-secondary more or only if you're 15 like what <laughs> what is this line i yeah i don't know i don't know man it was stupid so frustrating <sighs> Anyways, I'm happy that at least baby steps are being taken uh, to get away from the lobbying turbo hell that has been H&R Block and TurboTax and all these other companies um, trying to just charge people money for them to pay money to the government. Um, which what is a useful industry incredibly that irrelevant definitely exists doesn't need to exist at all is literally just bad for everyone except for specifically probably only the heads at these companies which is just like bruh can we just stop can we have all the people that work there go do more useful things that would be great wow that's very heartless luke nope an industry is nope, under threat. we need accountants an industry is under threat close it all down and you would have those people just <laughs> go get different jobs they will have jobs brutal accountants are in high demand not everyone who works there is an accountant. Boom. Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> what about the developers who create this very useful software? That we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about the evil executives and lobbyists who work yeah, on... Be, they'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> They've probably made enough already. What about the janitor <clears throat> who cleans the office? I, honestly, I'm sure they'll still be employed. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else can move into that I office. I think they'll okay, make it. Enough. Yeah. I think All they'll right. be okay. All right. Fair enough. It, yeah. Okay. I'm kidding, you guys. Relax. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not actually defending the uh, the tax software it's a, it's a extortion meme. industry. It's a meme. Uh, what do you want to talk about next? Reddit may become unsearchable. This would actually really hurt me because legitimately a way that I Google things now is I append Reddit, um, which I, I know that some companies actually know that and they try to hijack the top search results of when you put Reddit on the end and stuff, but those are pretty easy to spot. So yep. it's okay. Uh, but Google has become so like <laughs> unusable that I actually do do that. So this will suck. But uh, Reddit is reportedly threatening to block web crawlers, including from search engines like Google and Bing. It cannot reach an agreement with generative if AI... If it cannot reach an agreement with generative AI companies to pay for data collected from the site, sources inside Reddit report that the company believes Reddit can survive without search. I actually disagree. Me too. The amount of organic browsing that I do on Reddit compared to the amount of, oh, I came across this article by searching, oh, I'm on Reddit and this is an interesting thread, I'll read for a bit, okay, goodbye, is like I don't just negligible. go to Reddit personally yeah i never just go to reddit i almost always end up there by accident yep i uh i don't know man I, reddit on the one hand has weathered some serious storms yeah. and has demonstrated that they are quite resilient on the other hand there's a fine line between resilient and and confident and arrogant and hubris um over 500 news organizations, including the New York Times, Reuters, and the Washington Post, have installed a blocker that prevents their content from being collected and used to train AI. I uh, have bad news for them. Um, that isn't working. <laughs> so, cool. Um, and I guess the difference between those news organizations and Reddit is that Reddit's management is tech savvy enough to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, I I can't remember what um what it's called, and this isn't a topic. But I was reading a discussion um the other day about how some sites are like honey potting junk data in order to like wreck the data sets that some of these AI crawlers have. Interesting. So they're they're creating a bunch of a bunch of false information so that anything that crawls their stuff without permission uh, is going to have bad results. If that makes sense. Interesting. So you what uh, you interesting would, idea? I, yeah, I think it's a matter of time before the crawlers figure out how to work around that. I mean, as as someone who was recently tasked with creating a crawler. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You, oh, you're talking about me? Yeah, yeah. sure. I don't know. Um, like, I mean, I, w- would you would you find a way around that? Yeah, but then it's like <sighs> it's slower. Yes, because you have to you have to hide where the where the traffic is coming from. You have to you have to take a more subversive is, approach to those, collecting the data. This is one of those arms race situations where like you could get a whole bunch of websites that report on the same thing um, to agree to put like one piece of junk. And then if none of them have agreements with these things and that piece of junk ends up showing up in results, it's like, okay, we got you. Um, then you can use legal action, stuff like that. Yeah, but like realistically, a lot of these crawlers are going to be coming out of places like China or Russia. Where, where it just doesn't matter. Realistically, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Yeah. yeah. yeah what, what, you're going to sue someone in China for using your data incorrectly and like... Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good yeah. luck with that, right? It's it's an, it's been an interesting thing to watch. Um I'm of the opinion that yeah, I don't I don't see any way that you're really going to stop it personally. I don't think um, it's realistic. Yeah. If people want to take it, they're going to take it. And this is the same conversation we had before where I was saying that I um even though there's like uh chip restrictions going into China, I think Chinese AI developers are not necessarily at any bigger disadvantage than North American ones because there's more uh, legal pressure here. So they have like hardware restrictions and over here we have legal pressure. Well, they also have their governmental restrictions in terms of like, I'm, my understanding is that um, there's there's restrictions on the outputs of large language models over there. I think you'd have to be really careful about that certain things. That don't exist over here in sort of the, the land of the free as we as we are familiar with people referring to themselves. I think there's still some. Well, there's some that I know have been uh, self-imposed by some of the larger ones, but I also know that there are much smaller LLMs that will output anything. Oh, yeah, that's definitely true. And, and, and I know that you can access ones. those here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, effectively, there isn't really a limitation on yeah, it if you're enough. willing to dig for it. Yeah. Anyways, that's a developing and sort of under and an uninteresting conversation for most people. Uh, should we do the wing? Can we jump to that sim swap? Actually, I before we do that, yes, we're gonna do the sim, sim swap. Let's have some fun with the wing. But first, I want to talk about some cool stuff that's happening on the store. Ah, um, oh, where is it? Dang it! Why can I not find this? I can make no ah, surprise noises. There we go. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we are launching our premium sport <laughs> joggers. They are forty nine ninety nine. Nine? Why did I say that? Forty nine ninety nine. Uh they feature a nylon spandex blend and they have super cool reflective taping on the side. Yeah. Um actually looks pretty sick. I have been I have been demoing these for quite some time. I actually yeah, I've had a pair of these for almost a year now, and they look and feel flippin' awesome. And this stripe here is like a, a reflective. Were you rainbow. wearing these in Taiwan? Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. I noticed you were wearing some like, you know, not Costco jeans. And I was like, hey, those are actually like pretty sweet. And I wasn't sure what they were. And apparently they were these. Yeah. So they're super stretchy. Um, They are not, I would say, the most ventilated. So if you are expecting to like go hard in them, uh, they they are not, they're not the most ventilated. But if you are, uh, if you're Oh yeah, see that's a that's that a, photo. I have that one up on my screen right now. Yeah, that photo is really cool. That's a really good shot of how cool they look. Zipper pockets because I flippin' hate Heck yeah. losing stuff. Uh, it drives me absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, they're they're super comfy, uh, super stretchy. I think they look awesome. Uh, those are launching today. Also on the store today, we've got. Um, backpacks are back on the store now featuring standard zipper pulls instead of the weak carabiners. So our original stock is all gone. New orders will ship as soon as our new delivery arrives. That should be in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're apparently advertising by November 20th and you will be included in the list of people who will get the new updated carabiner pulls along with the little piece of hardware for swapping out the standard pulls so when i say standard pulls i just mean like any normal zipper pull that's on there now and then we'll get you once we've got everyone with the old weak carabiners updated um it's just taking a lot of time in production we're going to get those out as soon as we possibly can this is interesting we created a new promotional mechanism 
we can now do free shipping with your entire order when you buy a specific product. Um, I think we did this with the Lux backpack launch. Tried to. Oh, did it not work? Oh, that's uh, right. It didn't work then. Um, so we did it manually because it was a very, very low quantity. Now we can do it automated and we're running a quick test. So today only, today only, because we have no idea how many people are going to redeem this. We're not 100% sure how much it'll cost. Um, so we're, we are, we are, you are our guinea pigs. For today only, if you buy a plaid flannel, not a mystery plaid flannel, good gravy, where's the plaid flannel? Okay, there it is, you find it eventually. You get free shipping for your entire order. Plaid flannel, woo! It looks nice and it's available in a bunch of different colors. Very good reviews. Very nice shirt. Good quality. Thomas Harper. Oh, wait, no, top quality. <laughs> it has pockets. <laughs> it took me 30 days to notice it has pockets. All right, thanks, you know the, Andrew. You know what the weird part is? Uh, I did Andrew. the same thing when I was just reading in my head. Yeah. I was like, Thomas Harper. What? Well, yeah, why did I? Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. The point, the point is uh, the plaid flannel, free shipping for your entire order. And finally, we are taking signups for our long-teased magnetic cable management product. Yes! Dun, 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 why do they have these stuck on wood? They're not, they're not, they're not. They're on the magnetic plates that you can uh, screw into things. So we've got a bunch of really cool cable organization stuff. All you got to do is go to this page, which I will post in the chat. There, that is all the updates for the store. And now we can do whatever it is that you had wanted to do, Luke. <laughs> the wing, the wing, your sim swap. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. After we do sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Got them. Ugh. The show is brought to you today by Green Man Gaming. Things are getting spooky this week. Oh and our sponsor, Green Man Gaming, chose to scare us with a monstrous autumn deal. Halloween costumes are expensive, so why not stay in with Green Man Gaming, where it's all treats and very few tricks. As an official PC game retailer, they work directly with over 1,300 developers and publishers, so all their keys are 100% legit, so you can directly support the creators. Over 6 million gamers have used their platform to purchase games, cementing GMG as a trusted and reliable source for your PC games. In the famous words of a certain hooded merchant, uh, what are you buying? I actually do you, do you don't know get the reference? reference. Resident Evil, I'm pretty sure. I what are you buying? Have never played a Resident what Evil. What are you game. selling? Do you want to know something funny? I know the reference. Neither have I. Really? Yep. You've never played an RE game. Nope. How's Final I, Fantasy VI going? I have been going? playing Final Fantasy VI. Are you still enjoying it? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Okay, actually. we'll talk about it more later. Yeah. yeah. Um. So why not be buying titles like Doom <laughs> Eternal, Remnant Two? Warhammer 40k, Dark Whoa. Tide, and especially this year's RE4 Remake. Hey, speaking of which. Up to 72% off. Uh, there's nothing to be scared of. The sale's on right now and will last until November the 3rd. Check out the link below and pick up something to play this Halloween. The show is also brought to you by UPDF. Nope, we'll do that later. Dan? Pausing. Sorry. Pa pausing? <laughs> you can't do the minor horn. Right, I got you. <laughs> Struggling with PDFs? UPDF is here to brighten your day. They uh, have an AI-powered PDF editor. Um, their AI feature, Optical Character Recognition, or OCR for short, transforms images into editable text. With UPDF, you have the superpower of editing any element in a PDF, including text images and links, all while preserving the original format. And UPDF supports converting PDFs to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It can summarize PDF files in seconds, explain in-depth reports accurately, and translate them into different languages. You can annotate PDFs with highlights or use over 100 stamps and cute stickers. That is a feature. Um, they've also got new features like React PDF files, form field recognition, and digital signature. UPDF is available for Windows, Mac, iPad, iOS, and Android, and you can access the app on two desktops and two mobile devices with a single premium account. Plus, UPDF is priced at only 12% of the cost of Adobe Acrobat. That either <laughs> means that UPDF is affordable or that Acrobat is overpriced. I'll let you be the judge. For all our WAN Show viewers, you get 58% off, 20 gigs of cloud storage, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check it out at the link down below. The show is also brought to you by Guess Who's Back, Savage Jerky. Let's go. 
Oh, we get to pick one from the bin. Well, I'll be taking... Um, oh, hold on. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Okay, my mouth's already watering. I want my maple buffalo bacon. <laughs> you get to pick one from the bin, grabs four. <laughs> well, no, I'm looking at them. I want to look at them. Okay, there's sizzling maple. Is that yours then? Is I, it just renamed? I hope. I hope it's the one, but maybe it's a new flavor. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sizzling maple. Okay. There's, ooh, bourbon glaze bacon. That's also bourbon glaze bacon. There's blazing warrior bacon jerky. Hey, they sent all bacon jerky. That's hilarious. Oh, no, nope. there's one beef jerky. There's also salt and pepper patriot. Um, okay, so I am assuming... You know what? I'm not going to assume anything. I'm going to let you go first. No, assume. I, th I thought you were going to go salt and pepper. Oh, okay. It was between two. Can you get the second one? Because that was one of them. <laughs> uh, oof. Let me see. Oh, I mean, Blazing Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Can we be less mind melded? Because that would actually make our conversations a Probably lot more, more interesting, interesting for me. Yeah. If I just didn't know all what you're going to say already. What's the point of us even talking? We should just sit here on Wan Show and read the doc together and go, hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. Also, that's what Luke would think. Cool. Yeah, it'd be a lot less fun for you guys to watch, I guess. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Which, which, which route are you going? Um, I'm going to go with Bourbon Glaze. I'm sorry, am I supposed to be doing talking points? Um, not every cow or pig can turn into savage jerky. They use only premium quality beef and bacon that's hand and they make jerky that's handcrafted in small batches. They've got daring flavors from mild to wild, like sizzling maple, which was previously known as maple cayenne, smokehouse, and bourbon glaze. If you're a braver man than me, you can even try their California Reaper, oh, which that. offers up seething heat up to 2.2 million Scoville. Uh, the question here is, should Linus try this next time on the WAN show? I have... Have I done their Reaper or have I done their Ghost Pepper? I'm pretty sure we've done both. It is extremely hot. Very hot. It's very hot. Very hot. The best part is that Savage Jerky is all natural with no preservatives, artificial ingredients, or gluten. Plus, they're high in protein, paleo, keto friendly, and they offer low sodium options as well. You can get your hands on them at Sprouts Farmers Markets nationwide in the US, or you can get 20% off your order today using code WAN20 at the link down below. They also offer free US domestic shipping right up till the end of the year, so don't miss out. All right, bourbon glaze, let's try it out. Um, in the meantime, why don't we move on to our next topic? Oh, we're supposed to do merch messages. Uh, oh, we'll do the full thing after. Let's do three merch messages. No, no, we'll do it. We'll do it at some point. Just he relax. just doesn't want to switch his phone. I really don't. <laughs> I, I, like, really don't. I've been hands-on with it already, just to get all my apps loaded onto it and stuff like that, go through the setup wizard, and it's... Well, I'll let you experience it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hit, hit me, Dan. It's good. It was good. I like this one. Uh, what features have been removed from modern computers that you still can't understand? Windows search being awful does not count. Mm. Oh. They took the easy one. How about IR? IR file transfer. Did you ever use it? No. <laughs> but I was pretty young and had no reason to quickly beam, you know, a, uh, a file from one thing to another. And to be clear, I mean, it's not like Apple doesn't have an equivalent now with AirDrop. But on the Windows side of things, how the f*** do I just get a file to someone We've We've really talked quick? about this on Wayne Show before, yeah. yeah. It's incredibly frustrating. I mean, okay, okay, crossover cables. There's another one. They do technically still exist. You technically could just take two computers and connect them and manually configure a bunch of bullshit. But why is it? Honestly, though, really, really, I would like the networking people to, to come at me like I'm five. Why is it that we haven't just built functionality into Ethernet adapters such that the default behavior when I just connect two Windows computers to each other isn't to act as a crossover cable? Because my understanding is you don't even need to use a proper crossover cable anymore. You can use really? any cable as a crossover cable. Oh, well. That's my understanding. <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that. But why isn't... Why isn't it that when I plug in a crossover cable between two computers, they aren't just immediately like, boop, here's the shared folder and I can just drag and drop a thing. It's like, 
ridiculous. Yeah, so, so people brought this up last time we complained about this too, and I forgot about it until now when they brought oh, it up. Windows again. nearby share. But Does yeah. it work? Let's try it. Yeah. Nearby share. Here, nearby sharing settings. Uh don't know if it's gonna start detecting things and stuff that you want to stream. I'm okay, sure. it's on. Now what? Here, I'm just going to hide my screen for a second. So nearby share, did you turn it on? Yep. Okay. You just click the thing and it's working, right? There's no like confirm. I, I didn't have a confirm. Yeah, I just I just clicked it. Um okay. Um now what? Yeah, where do I go to do this? Uh okay, here. Let me just make sure there's nothing incriminating here. Uh not sure across mm-hmm. devices. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that incriminating on my screen. So what? Like I just share? Share with Skype? Share. Okay. Is this gonna work? Maybe. That'd be cool. Is it actually this good? Can I go to your screen? Uh sure. Did did anything pop up? I think it said it was going to go to downloads. It's called D seven S H R P Y X O. No. Yeah, I don't really see anything there. No. Nope. Uh oh wait, is your date modified oldest to newest? I mean, I looked at the whole thing. What is it called again? <laughs> D7SHRPYXOAA-XXB. Yeah, it's, it's not here, bro. Okay. I'll, I'll try sharing it again. I want to see the What are you sharing it to? I'm sharing it to... Because um, this should be WANSHOW2-LAPTOP. Yeah, WANSHOW2-LAPTOP. Okay, I clicked it. Okay, let's see what happens. Is there any indication on your side that anything's happening? Nope. I just click it and then it, and then the dialogue goes away. <laughs> so is your nearby sharing configured to be on? Yeah, look, everyone I mean, nearby. Looks like it. Save files I received to downloads. downloads. But it didn't prompt you in any way? This is the wrong downloads. Let's go users. When to. You shouldn't be. That should be the right downloads folder. Yes, yeah, so I know. I'm just, you know, someone's going to... Try to point it out. Okay. It's definitely not there. Well, really good feature. Um, Sick. Maybe we're doing it wrong. Check notifications. Check notifications. Chat's blowing up. They want you to check your notifications. Well, it should have given me a notification. I would argue that. Oh. No, that's I started a live stream. Oh, we could watch Wan Show. Oh, we could watch Garbage Stream. Garbage Drum Stream. Mm-hmm. Full plane exclusives. Giving away BG I mean, hey, codes. that's basically the picture I tried to send you. That thumbnail. <laughs> the system works <laughs> but okay so do not disturb is on in their defense so i wouldn't have gotten the thing because mm-hmm. do not disturb is on so okay but it's also not in there i'll concede that but but yes there's is bluetooth on people uh, are helping us this is great live troubleshooting if that's a problem okay first of all yes it's on and two if that's a problem it should prompt you that yeah and i shouldn't have been able to select his computer yeah. and share to it yeah, it should tell him or both of us turn off D and D. Why does that? Matter? I mean, do it, do it, do it, you coward. Well, it's on because we're live on a show. Like, there's a reason. Okay, it's off. Okay, I'm sharing with you again. Okay, so here you go, guys. Live demo. When show two laptop. Okay, it just goes away. It gives me no information whatsoever. I did hey! get a thing. Hey. Save and open. Okay. With photos. No way. Hey, you up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it works as long as you're, you know. Okay, not D&D bad. On. Not bad. Can you share with me? Probably. Um, something that's kind of funny is I think there's a setting in Teams to turn on D&D anytime you're on a call. Hmm. <laughs> So literally Microsoft's own software is going to m- block Microsoft's other software from working. 
I mean, you say that like it surprises you. I actually want to. Okay, hold on. Do not disturb. Okay, so do not disturb is back on. Can you try to send me something again? Yeah, I sure can. I mean, I didn't realize we were doing a detailed investigation into the. Uh, yeah, well, we are now. Reliability okay. of anything to delay the wing. <laughs> What? Okay, it just sent me a notification anyways. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, Wait, are they all coming through now? No, this just told me that it finished. Mm. But I, I turned D&D &D on, and what I was hoping was that if I just manually opened the notifications panel, maybe it would show it in there. So, like, if D&D &D is on, but you know a file is going to be shared, you could grab it. Um, but then it just sent me the notification, even though Do Not Disturb is on. So, that's cool. Uh, now I'm going to send you something. Um... Am I the only one who absolutely hates that Windows even has a notification shade at all? No, not at all. I use them for absolutely nothing other than to get in my way when I'm trying to click something in the system tray. You want to know something really fun? I learned that it has a notification tray thing uh, right now. <laughs> I've never used it before. <laughs> I had no idea it was a thing. People said check notifications and I was like, this is probably where it's going to be. And then, yeah, it was right there. Like, <laughs> cool. Yeah, occasionally I'll get like, um, okay, I turned on my, my VR machine for the first time in like three weeks or something. Um, at, at some point, like this was not recent, this was a while back, and that machine is signed into Floatplane so that I can monitor chat and so I can stream to Floatplane or something. Like it was signed in for some reason. And I literally couldn't use my computer to click, I was trying to click something in the system tray. I literally couldn't access it for over a minute because of every Floatplane upload that queued up. Sorry, am I supposed to see something? Yeah, um, but you probably have D&D &D on. I don't even know where to set Do Not Disturb in Windows. Just search Do Not Disturb. I got it, though. Find it. You know what's interesting? My side gave me a little thing. No way. Yeah, okay, so let me, let me do see. this again. I'm going to send it to you again. Share. With Wancho Laptop 1. And then see in the bottom left right-hand corner? Oh! Sharing to Wancho 1 Laptop, download.png, waiting for Wancho 1 Laptop to accept. That's totally fine. Did it not do that for you? No. Dude, what the heck? So it, so it has the ability to punch through Do Not Disturb, and it might just not inform you that it's waiting for a transfer or something? You're Windows 11. Are you Windows 10? I am. <clears throat> oh, maybe it got better. <clears throat> Interesting. I thought we both got force upgraded to Windows 11. I just showed up one day and it was Windows 11. Probably someone accidentally clicked it. Hmm. I mean, that's what my kids did with the computer downstairs. I was really annoyed because as far as I can tell, there wasn't an easy way to go back. Hot take, I like it. I run Windows 11 at home. I've never looked back. Really? Yep. Do go on. I just haven't had a single issue. Literally never. What? Yep. Zero. I also noticed you didn't even bother to move your start menu to the proper nope. position. And it's in the middle at home. And I like it. What, what about, about the, the f <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are you, are you taking the p No. What about combined taskbar icons? I would lose my mind if I couldn't expand them. I've actually been combining them since like Windows 7. Yeah, I don't. I don't How do I you guys work was, effectively? I didn't know that was new with Windows 11. I've been doing that. I'm for an a executive. Long time. You think I do real work? Mm. <laughs> it's all emails, mm -hmm. dude. I, yeah, yeah, I, okay. I have, <laughs> I have like valid. <laughs> you got your email client, and then I'll have like, Teams that's and it. Slack and, and Discord for talking to a few creators and a browser. Actually, probably a few browsers, and then a few windows of each browsers, browser, and then a ton of tabs in each one of those windows. And then I just, like, wreck my RAM. And that, that's, uh, there we go. I'm three browser windows and teams. That's my quadrants. Yeah. Yep. It's inefficient. What do you mean? Oh, I guess if you have them open at the same time, always. I have three monitors. Yeah. Got to use the screen real estate, down. dude. Yeah. 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 I have a big monitor. I miss, yeah. I miss my, uh multi-monitors i like actually i i i think i'm an outlier on the third monitor productivity step really i i think i actually use it more than most people do hmm. 
Oh, I mean, I was a big third monitor guy when I was at NCIX. Yeah. I had four, actually. Now well, because they say, it. like, the second monitor is, like, a big productivity step, but then the third monitor is supposed to be this, like, tiny single-digit percentage one. I, I, I needed all four. So the, the three were I had, um, I had our internal system which I think you probably remember, like our internal like yeah. content management system and like product management system. And then I would have um, one monitor would have a second one of those so that I could refer to and utilize both. And then would also, I would have as like my alternate view on that one, our live site. And then the third one, I would usually have like manufacturer uh, product info so that I could, uh, or I would have our Canadian and our US internal systems, and then I would have manufacturer product info. And then my last monitor was for uh, internal uh, intra-office messages, uh, which some people used MSN, some people used other things, I think, but basically like internal comms. I have, like, I have stuff like, you know, in Teams or in my situation more often, but I do also do it in Teams, uh, your, your call window is a new window. Mm -hmm. So I have a dedicated spot where that goes. Whenever I'm in a live call for Teams or Slack, that goes in one dedicated spot. I never put anything else there. And that way I can always see everyone that's in the call. Is my mic open or not? All that kind of stuff. It's, but if I had two monitors, that would take away extremely valuable real estate. But because it's on a third monitor, it's nowhere near as valuable real estate. So I can dedicate room to that. And then I'm never hunting for it to mute and unmute my mic, which is immediately notable time save you should get good and get a hardware mute button yeah got him for a while there i don't know if it's possible now but for a while there you couldn't rebind it in slack and it was a really annoying key bind that i really never mind, remember i i this is this was a long time ago and i've never looked at it since this was like a very long time ago it's very possibly changed ever since linus is gonna yell at me but i should look into it again go xlr Oh, go like legitimately go XLRs. I mean there there's a whole thing now though Dan yeah. like they're not getting driver development anymore yeah. they've like uh, abandoned it they're like kind of sketchy no um, someone in chat if I can find it uh, where to go the name was Archangel of Death <laughs> uh, which was really intense um, cringe <laughs> you're making fun of Floatplane people's usernames come on Maybe maybe they just are. You don't know. Um, okay, I can't find it. But they were saying that Windows 11 has an annoying bug where when you put uh, Windows Explorer windows behind something, they have a, a they they pop forward. See, like I've, I've never had that happen. I've had like no issues with the Windows side of things. I don't know. All right. So just so you know, I'm also Windows 11 at home. <laughs> I also have no problems. <laughs> Jeez, man. All I right. actually finally reformatted my system. So why do you, wait, why do you resist that one changing then? I don't know, it's a habit. Just. I just don't care. Like, honestly, <laughs> it's more that I just, um, I'm not, I'm not keen on putting in the work to reopen all the tabs that I like open. Yeah. It just, that's how little difference Windows 10 versus Windows 11 makes to me on a machine where all I ever do is look at these three side-by-side -side things. So honestly, I feel exactly the same way. Yep. One of my systems force upgraded and I was just like, all right. All right. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not worth the time to me to force this back down to Windows yep. 10 when I could just single button click on all the rest of the computers and now I'm just running Windows 11. With me, it was that I finally upgraded, um, I finally got rid of the bad ancient Windows install. Remember I talked to you about this when we were doing the AMD challenge? My Windows install is messed yeah, up. It's been through multiple <laughs> platforms and most importantly, it was installed on an NVMe RAID. So even though I'm no longer running NVMe RAID for my boot drive, I have to have NVMe RAID drivers installed or it will blue screen instead of actually booting. And that has been inconvenient a couple of times. Um, so finally, I, I treated myself to a really stupid boot drive. I picked up an Optane boot drive because this is my last chance to run Optane. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to see if I can find a scenario where it like matters at all. And maybe it'll be a video or something, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run Optane. 
So I have a single Optane drive instead of, you know, rated stupidity. Um, and as I was installing Windows, doing a fresh install, I realized that the drive that I had put in to install from was a Windows 11 drive. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I could take 20 minutes and I yeah, could... Whatever. With that said, I have had some problems with Windows 11 on other machines. My kids upgraded the VR machine to Windows 11, unbeknownst to me and undecided yeah. by me because they probably this. just clicked on it. Yeah. And then the issue that I had was that it wouldn't go to sleep anymore. So I had to go in and I had to play around with some, I think it was, an, it ended up being network driver kajiggery in order to get the thing to stay asleep because it would just immediately wake up because for whatever reason, the network driver was kind of bugged in Windows 11 or something like that. So... I'm not saying that every experience is going to be perfect and smooth like Luke's was or like mine was on my personal rig. Yeah, I'm not I'm not suggesting it necessarily. I just I run it on my work PC. I run it on my work laptop. Yeah, that I'm not sure if you're supposed to do. Is that approved internally yet? Sure. D- approved. What? Got him. Running Windows 11 on your work stuff? Yeah. I thought we're all Windows 10 still. Why does it matter? Why would why would it matter for Luke? Well, just no, because I, well, Okay, because Luke no wait, be this came up. This came up in conversation. I asked you about this, Luke, didn't I? Sure. Somebody, somebody actually okay, asked me. Man, show is turning into a meeting again. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody asked me, is it uh, is it okay if I install Windows 11? Which was actually beautiful. I really appreciate that. Uh, and I think it was. Uh, uh, do you know you're gonna like it? Mine Whatever. was another unintentional situation. I didn't want it to happen. It just did. I personally disable TPM modules in the motherboard bias on my computers at home so that it can't automatically upgrade itself. (laughs) That sounds like such a damn thing to do. I hate hate Windows 11. I can't work. It destroys my productivity. Here's a question. Okay. Pull them out with a pair of pliers. You know you can uncombine taskbar icons, right? That's new. Yeah. So I might switch, but... Okay. I mean, it made me extremely angry when... um, Initially, Luke, if you bring up your bring up your start menu, yeah, or your taskbar, right click it. Just the taskbar itself. Yep. Oh, when Task Manager oh. wasn't here. And look, I know, I know. Control Shift Escape, blah 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 blah. My, but that is no, I, so actually I, not a very natural position for me. Yeah. Whereas my hand is almost always on my mouse. Right click Task Manager. Like that's muscle memory for me. Do yeah. not take that away. They brought that back. Clearly, that happened so fast. I think it was an exec. So like, that's my theory. So Someone really high up was like, what the fuck? Give me this back. Put it back now. Because they didn't put back anything else. I don't just remember that. the exact timeline, yeah. but I think it was my work laptop that flipped first. And I didn't switch any of the other stuff until they implemented that. And then I switched everything because I drove me nuts. Right, right when you told me to right click it, I knew where you were going with it because I remembered that. That was so annoying. Here's a question though. <laughs> yeah. Is your... Is your Icons are they centered or left left aligned? Oh, Did, left. You left aligned everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I decided that I was gonna try it for a while. I was like, I I'm almost certainly gonna left align these, but you know, some designer out there thought this was a neat idea. Let me try it for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, back in 1998 or whenever the heck Apple started putting them in the middle, like it's not cool today. It's and not I just, trendy. I just don't care. The Windows search is so useless i pretty much never open the start menu <laughs> like actually i manually find my stuff these days i open file explorer and i go to the thing that i want instead of trying to type it in that's if it's sad. a windows setting if it's a windows setting i'll type it in but that's very rare for me it's more about landmarking my mouse position because mm-hmm. i will i will i won't windows e for file explorer I, I just click it oh. um so i so I, I i go down all the way down to the left i don't have to think about it i don't have to look at it and just then it's slam like it over a the bit. corner because you're a single monitor person as well mm-hmm. interesting i wonder if that's part of it why don't yeah. you pin it to the because i can't do the same thing it would slide onto my I side do pin monitor. it to the taskbar i pin it right next to the start button okay so i go all the way down landmark yep and then yeah. it's right there. So, so for me, it's more just that I, I, I that putting it in the middle means I have to like figure out where my cursor is and, and carry it to where it needs to go, which is stupid. Why am I doing that? With multiple monitors, though, I don't have a huge. I could like digitally raise the side ones to make a a trap 
or something. But like yeah. that is such a stupid workaround that yeah. if you ever did that, I would feel bad for you. Uh, yeah, I did not do that. I, I wouldn't even like you anymore. <laughs> That's it. That's the line. That's actually the line. <laughs> I took my three monitors and I digitally configured two of them to be three pixels higher than the middle one so that I could trap my mouse in a little monitor trough so that I could. No, that is just. It's a solution. <laughs> I didn't say it was a good one. I'm losing so much respect for you. For me, I didn't even do it. Just the mean? just the idea. What do you mean? The idea. I'm gonna need you to move offices. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, we have one more merch message oh. to do if you. Uh, yeah, sure. If, if you want. I can't believe how much shame I just got for literally <laughs> not even doing something. Well, I mean, for right. me, it's the fact it that you thought of it. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably going to leave just because both of you use Windows 11, so I don't... <laughs> they, they brought back uncombined taskbar icons. Also, I, I will so say, far. it's it's prettier. Yeah, but if you want pretty, you should just run Vista. <laughs> best look Controversial opinion, best looking Windows. There's like tons of issues with that. Well, yeah. Why does your operating system being pretty matter? I mean, that's pretty, a really what good... What do I do with my computer these days, bro? I just use Chrome. I should just have a, a Chromebook. Who cares? Everything is just Chrome. I mean, that's that's the future. Linus thinks. Can we arch happen. Linux? I think it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's scary. I don't like that. You've officially coldened. I I bet you our workflows. I bet you my current workflow is more similar to Colton's than most other people in the company. Really? So he like probably you, spends most of his time. You clean in like, out your desk every day. <laughs> like <laughs> he, he probably spends most of his time in like browsers and messaging apps. Yeah, and that's what I do. I almost exclusively live in browsers and messaging yeah. apps. Script review, I still tend to do in Word. That's how but work works. These Alex days. brought me a uh, a script in Google Docs today, and we ended up doing the review in Google Docs, and uh, it was mostly okay. What did you not like? Um, because we have found yes. Oh, no, he pointed at me. What now? Uh oh, we have found I don't know if this is applicable for Linus I'm just saying we have found that some people don't like certain solutions because they just don't know everything that you can do with them I know how to use Google Docs. <laughs> yeah, but do you though? Yes Maybe we could show you the <laughs> magic of Google so Docs <laughs> I know how to use Google Docs. Okay. All right. Well, so what Did can you I know do? What that do you, you like? can live collaborate? So one of the problems with Google Docs is that your settings are on a per document basis. So if mm. someone brings you a doc that doesn't have the correct uh, spacing set. So one of the things that really bothers me is automatic double spacing. I don't like pressing control enter uh, in order to get a single space. And so, and, and the reason is not just like an irrational hatred of double spacing, it's because it's not efficient on the prompter. And usually when I'm editing text, it's for a teleprompter. Um, you can change default settings. You can. But what, I think no, that's the, per I, no, user. Per, yeah, it's per, no, it's per oh. document. No, you, you can change your default settings. Sure, but that doesn't help me. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That doesn't help me if someone brings in a document they created. Okay, new solution. We can use the API to force a change to everyone Just in the organization. A There's a template. To no, but I don't think that's that unreasonable, to be completely honest. Really? To make it so that you, you can't have double spacing? <laughs> yeah, screw them. <laughs> I'm with Luke I on mean, this. Uh, I okay. hate double spacing. Double spacing too. sucks. And it's if so they dumb. want it, if they want it, they could go change it on that document. But we could change on an organizational level the defaults. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a hundred percent sure that you can do that? I'm genuinely like I'm gonna say ninety two and a half percent sure. Hold on a second. There's some pretty powerful things you can do in the Google admin. All right, hold on a second. Okay, bringing up my Google Docs here. The thing, the hills that we choose to die on are <laughs> just it's magical. You gotta live a little sometimes. <laughs> It's uh, it's true though. Okay, see, I, this one's I not feel doing it. it. It must be something that other people do then. Um, yeah, as your employees but, are wrong. But there was. <laughs> I swear to you guys. Uh, you know what? No, I think we figured out what it was. It was from someone pasting something into Google Docs to the point where even when oh, we just paste without formatting. Yeah. Control Shift V. I didn't paste it. Mm. Linus. So to, to the point where. <laughs> To the point where even if we changed the, uh, so even if we went into format, uh, line and paragraph spacing and changed everything, it wasn't fixing that chunk of it or something. Like it was, it was really annoying. Alex figured it out after he left. 
um, and messaged me and I was like, oh, that's a, that's interesting. That's a solution. But there, there, there have been things that have been a little bit annoying. I really don't like the way that Google Docs uh, handles many, many comments on a document. Mm -hmm. But then I also hate the way that Word does it now. So, oh, okay. Cool. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with words, but I notably dislike how Google Docs does it. So, like, it takes up way too much space. I need, yeah. I need better density. There's a lot of wasted space. I wish there was almost just like a view option. You know how they have like comfortable and compact? Yeah. Let me have that view option for comments. Yeah, Microsoft Microsoft Word commenting has been a complete cluster for like the last few years. It was really good before, and now it takes that sort of collaborative cloud editing um, approach even though I'm not collaborating and this is not in the cloud where you have to... I think that's them trying to not have a huge amount of differentiation between standard Word and, sh and SharePoint Word. I get it, but I don't want to, I don't want to um, close out editing a comment every time. I want to just click away from it and start working on another comment and not have it tell me, no, you can't work on this comment while you still have an open comment. That's utterly ridiculous. Yeah, that's annoying. It makes absolutely no I sense. I didn't know that was even a thing, but that's yeah, it's annoying. really frustrating. That actually feels like very like old school cloud collaborative, not new school cloud collaborative. Yep. New school would just leave it there and you could come update it when you want. Yep. But no, it's it's extremely frustrating. That's why. Um Yeah, I mean I I am I am familiar with Google Docs. I use it very regularly, including writing scripts in it. Um I do find Sometimes it's uh, it's little things like uh, cursor and selection handling. I, I do like the way that Word does it better. It's not perfect. That might be just a matter of being a little bit more used to it. Um, I got, I got, uh, oh man. I won't say their name because I actually really like this person. I genuinely <laughs> just think it's funny. So I don't want to throw them under the bus. So okay. I won't say their name. Um, but I asked for a SharePoint demo from a Microsoft rep that I know. Uh -oh. I was like, hey, like we're thinking about using this thing internally. Yeah. Um, but like it takes some, you know, like IT setup on our side. And I really just want to like let some people dip their toes in it. I didn't say all this, but I, I said, can I get a demo? We want to see how it works before we like do the work to set it up. Yeah. Um, and he sent me a CD key. And I was like, what is this? And I got roasted. Because I guess he thought I didn't know what a CD key was. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, bro, no, I wanted a demo. Like, I didn't want demo software. Like, not a demo disc. Yeah, I, want I wanted a demonstration. <laughs> and then it just never went anywhere. <laughs> oh, that's extremely unfortunate. Um, I was like, oh, all right. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Dan, what are we supposed to be doing right now? You have to answer the third merch message. <laughs> oh, okay. What was the question? Uh, I don't remember what the last one was. Uh, <laughs> hey, LLD, I get to watch a birthday wine show. Yay! Hey, Linus, happy, birthday. happy birthday. Being the water cooling nut you are, mm. what do you think is missing from the water cooling, <laughs> water cooling space that you would make to make it easier? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, okay. Uh, this has been attempted time and time and time again. And I think with additive manufacturing, maybe we're finally going to get there pretty soon. But do you remember, um, do you remember DTEC Unisyncs? Well, there's a, uh, whoa. Is this, is this very old? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can find a picture in this article. Uh, here we go. By the way, lots of feedback in the full plane <laughs> chat about how awful SharePoint is. So sick. Yeah. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll just be going with Google Docs. This after is a unisync. Yeah. It's a heat sink designed to go onto your GPU along with a, um, I mean, eh, this is not going to be great qual. Okay. No, we're not going to be able to zoom that far. <laughs> I'll, there we go. Along with a GPU block that handles cooling the, the graphics processing unit itself uh, to handle the RAM and VRMs and all of that good stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and go to installation here. So the finished installation should look a little something like this. A block to handle the actual heat generating components and then a big 
<coughs> heatsink thin array that shouldn't need too much airflow over it in order to handle the rest. Now, I think with modern GDDR6X, and I mean, presumably whatever's coming after that, it may be optimistic to handle those components with basic heat sinks like that so maybe maybe a future like this will will or maybe i shouldn't say a future like this maybe something like this will never be possible again in the future but i think it would be absolutely incredible if we could go back to non pcb specific gpu blocks and just use a standardized block just like we do on cpus with a hold down plate that you can swap out if you get a new GPU. And then just, uh, I don't know, whether it's whether it's like, you know, a company that designs these these unisinks, these, these cooling, these aluminum cooling plates, or, you know, whether they design them and stock them, or whether they measure everything and then, you know, they just 3D print them out of, you know, aluminum on demand. I'm not aware of anyone who's doing additive manufacturing with aluminum just yet, but I know you can 3D print in some metals and then you just order one and they basically print it, kind of, you know, sand down the bottom so that it's flat and offers a good, you know, mounting mounting surface and then you you just get it in the mail or whatever. It should be it should be theoretically a fraction of the cost of these all copper machined from a giant hunk of metal uh, single GPU solutions that we have today. Uh, and I, I would love to see that return because it's one of the things that makes water cooling so expensive. A pump you can carry forward to multiple builds. A reservoir you can carry forward for multiple builds. I used my last D5 pump for over 10 years before it finally gave up the ghost. And a reservoir, if you maintain it properly, there's no reason that you couldn't use it longer than that, especially if it's a good reservoir that uses O-ring seals rather than just um, gluing together acrylic panels. So CPU block, unless you must have another degree off or two degrees off or whatever, you could still be using a CPU block from 10 years ago. Nothing would prevent that. The one piece that you have to spend $150 on plus every time is a gpu block so if you could just spend you know 70 80 bucks on one once and then every generation you spend 20 30 bucks on a new all-in-one heatsink i could i could see it being more accessible because it's still a gigantic upfront investment but at least it's something where you are carrying forward the vast majority of these components as you continue to upgrade your system over the years so that that's something that i that i think i would change if i could Apparently, there are some rocket and defense companies that are doing aluminum additive manufacturing. Okay, so yeah, maybe we're maybe we're not that far off. That would be super cool. Is it time for me to pick a topic? Yes. No, oh. no, no. <laughs> he almost got me. No. <laughs> it's too quick. Illegal. It's too quick. Not allowed. All right. It's wing time. I think you mean. It's morphin' time. Dude, that's so weird. Okay, so here. Why, um, did, why did they ever do this? I used to really like LG phones. Okay, are you really not going to hold it up to the people? I, I, it doesn't have anything confidential on it right now. I guess it signed into my email. That's a surprisingly smooth action. You can just do it with one thumb like that. No problem. No, you can. You can't? I have really small hands, Luke. Okay. You can't just simulate having small hands. It's slippery. <laughs> Grab it with a couple pencils. It's extremely <laughs> slippery. It's also really heavy. Dan just keeps getting me today. It is fairly heavy, but yeah. my my Pixel Pro is also pretty heavy. I can't tell a big difference between them. Show off. <laughs> Jeez. wasn't my point um I, I was stunned at how heavy the pixel pro was pixel 8 pro was hmm. Hmm. for me it's less about the heaviness and less about the ease of flipping the thing it's, and it's more like, about why what the f 
would I ever do with this? Yeah. Yeah. Why? And they provide a little, there's like a little tutorial yeah. actually playing right now. Make sure you don't swipe that away so that I can kind of capture yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Sort of introducing Swivel Home, software that definitely was worth developing. Um, <laughs> someone's actual job, like someone's actual life force was consumed to create this. At the same time, this is why I wish LG was still making phones because like it feels well made. And it works. Yeah. Like, that's kind of crazy. What, did they sell, like, 50 of these or something? I like? don't know. <laughs> and they went through the engineering of making it feel like an actual, like, very solid, real product. Yeah, the, the fact that, that this made it past creating a functional prototype and going... Is insane. Is, it's kind <laughs> that, of mind-blowing That's probably to me. why they're not in phones anymore. <laughs> But like they made good phones. They actually did a good job of making the phone. Yeah. I just don't uh, The business guidance was a little Questionable. I can't believe that this thing is still getting software updates Yeah, like that's why I didn't think they were gonna be able to get me to use it because you have to do it like that You can't do it. Are you sure? Look it so the problem is that it's hard for me to hold on to this without slipping on it when I am when I'm like, oh, yeah, I can, it. but it's hard to, it's hard to reach up high enough. Oh, dang it. Oh, the gesture controls also on a phone with basically no chin bezel. Getting all the way down there is like killing me. I need buttons. So what happens is, I don't know, maybe part of it is just the way that I hold phones, but this is sliding on my pinky right now. So it's hard for me to push the front screen without it interfering there. And like, yeah, I can, I can get can I it. See it really quick. I want to see how I do it. I have a, I have a question. Does it open the other direction? No. Oh yeah, I I'm left-handed. I, don't I could not use way. this phone. You go like <laughs> this, <him>. right? <laughs> uh, you do yeah. pinky under. Yeah. So I do pinky to the side. Okay. So pinky to the side. Well, how do you, how do you, how do you touch the bottom of your screen? Because I can't, I can't touch the, I can't touch the bottom of my screen like that. So yeah, I think I'm, I must just have a different ergonomic strat. Yeah, no, there, there's no way I could reach that, like, not even close. Oh, yeah, like that's as close as I can get to the bottom of my screen with my pinky here. So I have to hold it at the bottom so I can get my hand lower, and that's the only way that I can get almost all the way across to the icon on the far left side. I'm just getting rid of my notifications. Yeah. yeah. So I can do that. Yeah. Like that. So, so small, I didn't small actually hand realize that was a thing. Like I can do this one handed ish, but it's like, oh, yeah. Putting it back feels like a, like a high risk maneuver. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I promised here on the show, I would do the official SIM swap. The SIM swap. Yeah, I was I was fidgeting with my SIM tool earlier. It's lucky I'm able to find it now. All right. Out it comes. Oh, rip, uh, rip SD card. Man, gotta love those Note 9 things. Best phone. Actually the best phone. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, do you want to see something wild? Yes. Uh, hold on one sec. Oh my God. Oh it looks my so God. hilarious watching him use it. When you have it like this, okay, <laughs> you either need to enter your pin here or you can unlock with your fingerprint. <laughs> oh, that's so goofy. <laughs> Just put it on the back of the phone. That's that's my biggest gripe with this, actually, um, is that the, 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 there's no... Like, I got so used to my previous Pixel where unlocking and also, okay, my biggest, my absolute biggest gripe out of everything with this phone was with my previous phone, you could swipe down on the fingerprint reader on the back and it would pull down your menu from the top. So you didn't have to adjust your hand at yeah. all. You just go whoop. And now I can't do that. Yeah. You can, you can uh, pull down the menu from like not being on a particular, I don't really want to show my it's screen. Like, it's something that but, Google doesn't do a great job of. It's just sort of continuity of features yeah, across their product line. Like that, that within the first day of using it, I like hated it because it didn't have that feature. Yep. And now it's, I would say it's acceptable just because it isn't Just broken. because it isn't this. And, or that. Like I'm holding this phone 
What exactly? It genuinely looks hilarious. Is the utility? It looks of like you're holding this carousel like a, up here. A small toy. Oh my axe. God, what did I even? Oh wow, this is hilarious. It's a video. This is uh, gimbal mode. So you can okay. record your video at a you know fraction of the quality. Wait, why? But pan around inside it with digital zoom. Because you're a big dumb idiot, I guess <laughs> is the reason that I could think of for that. But that's not actually what I wanted to show you. Uh, what I wanted to show you was this. Um, what? Why is? Why is? Anything that I'm looking at happening right now. Where's just, <laughs> where's just regular old camera mode? That's a good sign. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Whoa! What pop the up heck? camera! I forgot that this phone had a pop up camera, like the OnePlus, whatever the crap it was. Pop up headlights, dude. Love it! Wow. So it has, um, yeah, because it's that's one thing I do like about it is that it's all screen all the time, tiny forehead bar. Tiny chin I like the bar, pop up camera. Just actually all screen, baby. I was wondering what that slot out at the top was earlier. Actually, slot out like the 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 up here where the camera comes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what to call it, but yeah. Um, door, I guess. I'm sure, I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and put it in. No way, it does have a micro SD slot. Hi, I, hilarious. I, I would love. Love if this story ended with you being like, I think it's pretty cool after using it for a while. Luke, we know I don't that's think not it's happen. going to. <laughs> even just, but it would be so cool. Even just picking the stupid thing up off the desk, like I'll go to, I'll, I'll, I'll go to, particularly with my left hand, I'll go to grab it and like it'll slide, it'll slide apart a little bit because <gasps> in order to have the hinge be loose enough that you can easily activate it, it also just is like kind of all over the place, like it's. <laughs> yeah it's an absolute joke oh boy i'm not even gonna bother putting my sd card in here i don't have anything on it anyway i never use it <laughs> which is a cool feature and you wanted to use it yeah it's just I, i'm yeah I'm, I'm i'm gonna get the full value out of my phone yeah i'm more glad that it you know has it or whatever yeah for sure uh but at I, I, I got some some intel from a phone menu from a, someone I actually trust at a phone manufacturer and he's like honestly the reason that it's gone is not because like that space mattered or because like people like hated users uh, a big part of the reason that it's gone is because micro SD cards tend to be the cheapest crappiest NAND tend to be very unreliable and, and if they break people are gonna be mad at the phone yeah that makes sense um and and so he was like, yeah, it's one of those things where the vast majority of users are like are chill and understand, but for the rest of them, why are we doing this? We're creating extra tech support and extra negative brand perception for what? Yep. Um, so that we really, cannot sell phones that are more expensive because they have more internal storage. Like this is this is really actually harmful in every way. But that makes me not blame them at all because I totally get it. But it's just frustrating that that's the reality. That sucks. Yeah. I, I don't think that that is the same excuse, or I don't think that's the same reason the headphone jack is ultimately gone. Um, that just seems to be... You can it, change the back to double tap to open notifications? What? What part of it? Just Do you just tap the back of it? How do you even do that? I actually tried to look for this because I saw... I noticed that the G is like a different texture. It's partially mirrored. And I was like, that could actually be a touch thingy. Gestures. Yeah, like right now, if I, if I tap it, nothing happens. There's no indication that anything could happen. Nothing's going on. So how do I even find gestures? Now everyone's going to see how dumb I am with phones. Okay, I just had to add some notes to my wing to my wing review. Like using the fingerprint sensor in wing mode is hilarious. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> oh no, my system is four days out of date. Nice. I'm still getting software updates, Luke. It's actually crazy that it can be even four Install days. Install update to keep device secure. Install now. Installing a security update. Oh wow, this is a T Mobile update. What? I don't At see this option. Our customers' privacy, whatever. Okay, well, sure. I mean, that's not a T-Mobile SIM. You know what? 
I don't actually know if this thing works on my carrier or in my region. Welcome to the new video calling dialer. Support.tmobile.com. I mean, I'm not on T-Mobile, so let's uh, let's see. I'm going to call Luke LaFrendo here. Oh, no! Oh, gross! Okay, so one of my favorite features, as I think many of you will know, is T9 dialing. So instead of me bringing up uh, a, like a text search box and then typing with a keyboard, I can just press 5853, and that will bring up Luke Lafrendo. And on my Samsung phone, they support uh, swipe right to call, swipe left to text. So I'll just go 5853, swipe right, and I can call Luke in like actually under a second. Um, on this one, you click the name, and then it finish, it completes filling in the phone number. So then you still have to Go press all the way back call. Down. Yeah. One more interaction, which is basically my kryptonite. I hate unnecessary interactions and interfaces. They are I knew terrible. that about you very quickly when like one of the first few days we worked together, you went on this huge rant about the internal software at NCX because they like added a button click. You're like, how could you possibly do this? Well, it you didn't serve me. any function. No, I, I remember, it didn't do anything <laughs> other than just be and and he it's was more no, mad at the it's time. More, no, it's more than just the button <laughs> click. It's the fact that there was a slow loading time associated mm. with the extra button press, and it was one that I had to press fucking a hundred times a day. Yeah, and the people actual who, notable productivity. And loss. the people who spec the change never use these tools. They touch it once a day. Just to, they don't actually work with it. They just watch other people work with it. And so they didn't understand what they were changing. Yeah. So it was stupid. Yeah. That was my problem. And it did nothing. I, I have bad things to say about the back button thing. First of all, on my previous Pixel, it was slightly indented. So you could find it with your finger without looking, considering it's on the back of the phone. This has nothing to it. You can bear... I can... I can sort of maybe tell that it's there because there's like slightly more grip for a second but it's really hard to tell also before all i had to do was slide my finger down like that very natural to bring down a tray you pull down now i have to tap twice on something that i i don't know where it is so i'm just going like i can't find i genuinely i'm genuinely trying now i'm genuinely i still haven't got it where is it okay now i gotta feel Got a feel. There it is. That's not working. There we go. I got it. Like what? Uh, no internet. No phone calls. I might have to do some stupid oh. kajiggery. I I hope it supports my bands here because I really want to use this phone for a month. Just tap anywhere. Okay. If it's just tap anywhere, then it's horrible. <laughs> it sounds like the sounds like the kick sensor on the trunk of my car. Theoretically, oh, dude, you just have to like bash it. Oh. Oh. Okay. You can't. No, that's also not working. Hey, Dan. This is this is bad. <laughs> You're on the clock, hey? Yes. Yes. Uh what are the odds that you want to set up my um my my stupid APN settings and stuff? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. That seems like a thing Dan could do. I um Sick. I have a lot of practice because I buy Chinese phones and they don't necessarily work in Canada. Okay. And it drives me mental. Um cool. Um, because yep. I don't want to do it. I, I can do it, but I have to like learn how to do it every time. It's one of those things where I only do it once every like two years. There's no sensor on the back of the phone. It's an accelerometer. Oh, shut up. <laughs> that's what that's what chat's saying. Apparently really you just slippery. actually have to bash it. That's so much worse. And now because of that, I feel like it's just going to open when I don't want it to all the time. Awesome. So I'm just going to end up turning it off anyways. Hey, Robin C just bought a Lux backpack. Hey. Joining the crew. Lux backpack crew. Let's go. Do we have reviews for those yet? No, we haven't shipped any out yet. Oh, right. It's like a... It's a pre-sale basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same backpack, but in a different material. So we were, we decided we were okay with it. That's fair enough. Okay. What are we supposed to be doing right now? Topics. 
Oh, topics. We got a half hour till that. I want to talk about Activision's confidential arms deal. Yeah. According to the Wall Street Journal, Activision made a secret deal with arms maker Remington to feature its adaptive combat rifle in 2009's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. No money was exchanged, but both parties agreed to keep the deal confidential. So why do we know? Well, the deals that well the details of the deal were outlined in internal Remington documents that were uncovered during a lawsuit that was filed by parents of victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in 2012. Uh, Remington settled that suit last year for 73 million dollars. These documents outline a strategy on the part of Remington to increase its appeal with younger audiences. This is a quote. With increasing urbanization and access to shooting and hunting areas in decline, a primary means for young potential shooters to come into contact with firearms and ammunition is through virtual gaming scenarios. That is the most corpo-speak way of describing games have guns in them yeah. that I think I have ever heard. Yeah. Uh, one memo noted that while the company would not allow branded weapons in games where players can shoot at non-military bad guys, it wouldn't oppose replicas of its guns in those games because, and this is a quote, previous experience tells us people will seek out the brands of the guns. A lack of direct branding helps to shield us from implications of a direct endorsement while still receiving benefit from inclusion in the game. So we have some discussion questions here, but the thing that I really wanted to talk about yeah. is in this case, no money changed hands and, um, you know, it's, yeah, no money changed hands. So I would say that it's not the same as other product placements, but the fact that it could go completely undisclosed raises a lot of questions for me about... I don't know, everything I see in a video game. Because yeah. certain types of advertising are actually reasonably well regulated. Like influencer product endorsements, for example, now are, at least from a rules standpoint, very well laid out. You can't say anything you don't actually believe. So you can't disguise advertising talking points as personal opinion. Uh, you can't disguise paid content as um, organic content. Um, there, you have to disclose in ways X, Y, and Z at least Y amount earlier in the content. And there, there's, all these, these, there's all these rules around it. But it seems like somehow, whether we're talking about uh, movies or TV or video games, product placements don't seem to have any of the same kinds of guidelines. Yeah, and sometimes, like in this case, I'm sitting here thinking... I don't know. Like, like it, we have we have LG like, laptops. What about right? this jerky that we could eat? Yeah, no, but that no, but, is a pain. But that was just that was disclosed. That was yeah. But sorry. we we have LG laptops. Yeah, your LG logo is viewable. Is it probably not the most easily? I mean, I have oh oh, I verified. I put a verified sticker yeah, next to it right before it, but not on top of it. So yes. you can see that you have an LG laptop. Now, if you had a discussion with LG, and we're like, can we call these LG laptops instead of? ZP laptops and they yeah. were like sure and then you never talked about it yeah I mean I guess there's no money exchanged hands yeah and like it's a game with firearms so they like I don't know but a clear benefit took place for sure and a so clear for, benefit is happening for LG so for you having an LG laptop on your desk well there's no benefit to me in this case but in the case of the of the Activision um, Remington deal, there's a clear benefit to both sides, especially in modern gaming where they're going to sell skins on these guns. So we're not talking about like an insignificant, people are going to be way more interested in an officially licensed, you know, like, like, you like think that's properly true? modeled. Like, oh. Almost every gun that has, a, or, sorry, almost every game that has a Glock in it sure. just calls them like a something ever so slightly different, but it's obviously a Glock. And they sell a ton of skins because everyone knows anyways. I guess that's true. But then I'm thinking of uh, like, okay, uh, you know, thinking about like a game like World of Tanks where one of their shticks is the super accurate modeling of, 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 of the ex that exact, you know, model of tank or whatever else. So I see your point, but I also do think there's a clear value to accurately modeled weapons and vehicles. Um, 
so you know what? I don't. I don't think you're completely wrong. I, th- I feel like we're running into a handshake moment. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I I I, under, I definitely understand both points. I don't think it's completely. I think the value is very unclear, but it's defi- not measurable. Yeah. But it's it's, it's like an it intrinsic. Exist. It's yeah. an intrinsic value. I think there is value. Like I know that I know that the relationship between what, what racing game. Uh, developers and car manufacturers is complicated um, in much the same way where some of them there's deep cooperation and in others you end up with these sort of unlicensed lookalikes um, and for I, and that's a space where I can tell you 100% that there is a strong preference from gamers for the cars to be authentic that one I do know and but handle in an authentic way yeah for sure that that one is very true I I don't know I know people okay here's an example of a company that just has never cared at all as far as I can tell and just did it anyways um, Battlefront but no Tarkov uh, yeah, isn't that battle or battle state? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, battle sorry, state. Oh, pff, battlefront. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I meant to say battle state. Yeah, but, but, but they're in Russia, so yeah, like, exactly. who's going to enforce it? And and I do think that community sees some benefit, but honestly, oh, that community one hundred percent. I don't. I don't think it's talked about that much that the brand is correct. I do. Well, that the characteristics the, the are correct. The modeling and the characteristics yes. being correct is, that is very important a lot. and hotly debated. Um, but. If it was a smlock instead of a clock. Smlock. I don't think no, anyone people would, would care. No, people would be mad about that. <laughs> it's just a stupid name. <laughs> smlock. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, anyways, there's definitely value. Sure. I just, I just, I just want to, I guess what I'm, I guess what I want is more clear disclosures around product placement or i want our team to sell way more product placements <laughs> yeah one of the ones cuz if yeah. cuz if we could just take money from everyone and not have to disclose any of it then sure that sounds great okay, no, guys chill it's, what I, what we I just, find we disclose things okay i just i just mean it's uh, it, it just it just seems like Okay, fine. I I wish it could be this way, but if it's not going to be this way, then I should at least be I should at least be getting paid too. <laughs> By the way, no. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, LG does not pay for this placement. The reason these are here is because nobody wanted to use them internally, <laughs> which is ironic because they're grams, and the main point of them is that they're super light, and, and they, they never get moved. here and never move. <laughs> and they sit here and never move. Yeah. Um, the gram was a really really great concept when it first came out, and then I feel like just. Over time, they iterated and iterated, and it got like a little bit better. And then everyone else kind of caught up. Not gonna lie, um, <laughs> this thing is way less stupid than I initially thought. This like all screen full jig. You saw me using it in the meeting the other day, right? Oh yeah. Wait, it looked different though. Yeah, looked like it had a way bigger screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see what happens oh, now. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I understand. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I uh, I was expecting to kind of dunk on it. See, this might happen with the wig. This might happen with the wig. We can believe. It's uh, it's not booting. We can. Be- it's not booting. <laughs> no, all right, maybe not. It just. It, 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 oh, oh, just. Oh wait, it's booted. Oh, oh. <laughs> It's been sitting there for like three minutes. It might work. Ah, just hope for the win. Ah, the screen go. also just goes black sometimes, though. Oh. No, no, it, it hits. Uh-huh. No, no, it just it just does. Like I'll like I'll I'll unlock it with my fingerprint, and it'll just like go black for like three seconds. No, it was saying T-Mobile for like ages. Oh, nice. Uh, I need you to unlock it again. Uh, okay. <coughs> Nintendo says no fun oh, allowed. Yes. Again, very cool. Nintendo has released strict new guidelines for community tournaments, which is to say uh, tournaments without an official license from Nintendo. Uh, Highlights from the new guidelines include that tournaments must be run at or below cost, that organizers must publicly disclose costs and revenue, that there may not be any sponsors, 
any selling of food, drinks, or merch. There may not be spectator fees for online tournaments. There must be a cap of 200 participants in person or 300 online. There should be no prizes exceeding a market value of 5,000 euros total. And those are the ones in the dock. But I, I remember there being a couple of others that just felt utterly ridiculous. Um, hold on. Where's the, where's the dock? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here, here's, the, here's the Nintendo. I don't know. Oops. Uh, well, whatever. Uh, the point is, uh, the, oh, yeah, they have, must have reached the legal age of majority. Um, may not. The, oh, they. Oh, I, I remember. One of them was that they capped. Here we go. Here we go. For in-person community tournaments, uh, organizers that have reached the legal age of majority in their jurisdiction may collect an admission fee from spectators of not more than the equivalent of fourteen pounds or fifteen pounds per person. Which one is it? I don't know. I guess based on how restrictive the rest of this is, I would err on the side of caution and go with 14. Yeah. Um, what is a community tournament? A community tournament must meet the following requirements. Nintendo's copyrighted games will be used in the tournament. Nintendo, that is actually not the fuck how this works. Yeah, I don't think this should be legal at all, and I'm actually pissed off. Um, the, so the, the smash community is such an incredibly dedicated, surprisingly small group of people. I I've been like vaguely paying attention to it for quite a few years now, just cause it's like fascinating to me that it still survives despite all of these constant attacks from Nintendo. I was in like the, the Starcraft scene for a while. My brother was a caster. I really enjoyed playing. I watched a lot of the, the professional games. Um, and it was fascinating how robust of like infrastructure and community was formed around this game that had zero support from Blizzard, oftentimes Blizzard being antagonistic. Yeah. And then I have since been out of the StarCraft scene and it's been interesting watching the Smash scene because I see a lot of similarities, but it's way worse. Because Nintendo is not just like mildly antagonistic, they are very antagonistic. Like what are you even saying with all this? First of all, I don't think it should be legal for a company to even do this. And then second of all, like, screw off, dude. People want to play your game and have fun around it. Let them do it. And if some people make a bit of money, who cares? Holy fuck, calm down. It's actually okay. That should be a good thing. What do you mean? Like, what? if it builds up a grassroots scene yeah. and you can ultimately turn it into like a, oh. like a bigger thing or something at some point, like how can, how are you, how are you so short sighted here? Yeah. And like, okay, yeah, we get it. People are talking about, it. it's not copyright. It's that you own a license of the game, but not actually the game. So what? The difference between if everyone owns a license of a game, the fact that someone can come in and dictate how how many of us can be in one place and fucking play it. That's absurd. That should be illegal. It is it I, actually You should not be able to do this as a company. Makes no sense. It's completely BS. You know what? You know what? Luke. Are we hosting a Smash tournament? We're hosting a Smash tournament. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Sick. When we have the when we have the land center open, yeah. we will host a 201 person Smash tournament. <laughs> I will break as many of these guidelines as humanly possible. I'm pretty sure I know people that would cast it. And I challenge that. Nintendo to come after me. Okay. Fuck you. Do you want it casted? I don't Yeah, of course. Sick. I'll work on it. Like I I just there is absolutely no feasible way. There is no possible way. This makes, this makes no sense. Like, listen to this. Listen to this. You can't have a tournament in which participants are paid a performance fee or other expenses. I can't, I can't pay someone. I can't be like, yeah. Why not? Yeah, you can have some food. Why, 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 why do you insist who cares that people want to, uh, why do you insist that people that want to professionally play your game have to like be poor? That's what you're doing. Like, that's I don't so get it. stupid. The tournaments cannot receive goods or money from third parties such as sponsors. How is it any f***ing business of yours if I have a sponsor for my event? I will have sponsors. I promise you that. And you, I you promise. Want, you want the event host to make money? Because if they make money, they're going to keep trying to do this thing. And you should want them to do this thing. 
Like all the right oh. incentives are there. Some things make sense. Look, you can't use the Nintendo sure. logo sure. to promote your tournament. No problem. Yeah, that's your trademark. Even if you didn't want them to use like the Smash Brothers logo or honestly even the name of the game. Yeah. Who cares? You can't put Mario all uh, you can't draw your own Mario and put it all over your website because it makes it seem Nintendo sanctioned. No problem. Some things make sense, but some of them are absolutely ridiculous. Oh man. Oh man. The part, oh, they have, in their Q&A, they have stuff about, like, like school tournaments. Yeah, but no one who doesn't go to the school can participate. F*** off! Why? Who cares? Why can't it be two different schools going against each other? Why, why can't I go to the school and have my friend come? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter. None of this is enforceable. Like, you can, you can write this thing all you want. Like, what are you, what are you gonna do? You can ban me from Smash? What are you even talking about? What gives you the right? What is up with this company? I don't get it. Super bullshit. Uh, what do I mean? Migor asks, can we get Yuzu Bleep. as a sponsor? <laughs> Yuzu? Yeah, they make an emulator. I don't, think they have, I don't think they have money to spend, but like... Rough. Yeah. Well, as long as they do a dollar. Um, that would actually be hilarious. If sponsorships cost like a hundred bucks and we just had like as many sponsors as humanly possible, like sponsored by Daniel Besser. I would do it. <laughs> I'll spend my money on it. I'd buy it. that for a dollar. Well, look, yeah. look, we could take, we could take all that. Like, look, it's not that I want Daniel Besser's money. We could put it in the prize pool because we're going to have fun prizes yeah obviously yeah. and i need at least one that's five thousand and one dollars so that we can exceed <laughs> the limit so we need some money i i would i would i would sponsor this tournament i don't know what it would be but it just i don't know it just be me or i'll do it in like the name of mm, doing it in the name of flow plane is maybe not a great idea i mean we're doing <laughs> it as a i don't know either way i would i would put in a hundred bucks myself just because uh, this plan sounds amazing to me. Yeah, no, I, I, I think this is just the kind of thing that we have to do because it's the right thing to do. This is, if you guys read through this doc, I, I, I've, I've already given you some highlights, <laughs> but you'll be more angry than I am right now. This is not how you treat anyone, no. let alone no. your paying customers, especially not the ones who are so dedicated that they spend actual real time considerable time out of their lives to to master your product to master your game to 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 get together with other people in the community and share their love of your product that's it's broken is the only way that i can describe the manner of thinking that could possibly lead you to create this document it's broken I, I just want to read this message out because it's hilarious and the name is also great. It's from Cl Clapped K24 Accord on Floatplay <laughs> Chat. It says, I work construction in Ontario and I would buy a sponsorship on behalf of my <laughs> employer just for the memes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I gotta, I, <sighs> sh should I, should I contact Dbrand now? <laughs> This is great. We need to know when this is and stuff because there's like, especially if the if there's prizes exceeding five grand, there's like players that are going to want to come up. I bet you. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I have to I have to find at least one high profile player and pay them an appearance fee. Yeah. Because like that's one of the rules. <laughs> that's one of the rules. I will, I, Luke. No, I'm, I'm, I believe you. I will break every rule humanly possible. <laughs> we need to have like a checklist to well, really make sure we hit everything. To be clear, we're gonna no, we're gonna check with the lawyers. We're gonna make sure that anything that is a real, actual fucking rule, like according to the fucking law, we're gonna make sure that we don't break those. Like, I'm right. not gonna have a single Nintendo like, logo yeah, I was in the say, venue. We won't use their IP. Stuff Absolutely like that. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to imagine for a second that you can tell me in my fucking building. With my f***ing event that I'm allowed to charge X amount for admission. No, the admission is going to be 15 pounds and one pence. <laughs> I actually do all the transactions. 
people have to pay <laughs> an exchange rate to pay us and then we have to exchange it back to like actually use the funds just just to make it worse <laughs> it's ridiculous it's so ridiculous so we'll check into it oh. and you know what to be clear if the lawyer comes back and says you know what? They actually probably can get you they for can this. Bury you? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to bail because yeah. part of my and I'll tell you guys. I'll give you guys the update because the premise for me is that this does not appear to be in any way legally enforceable. It seems to be just ridiculous customer hatred for no apparent reason. Mm-hmm. Um, just Nintendo, pure Nintendo arrogance. Um, but if I'm wrong, I'm not going to be the arrogant one. I will stand down. I doubt that I'm wrong. Yeah. For someone to tell me what video game I can play in my building, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And hosting a Smash tournament would be sick. So, why not? Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, oh, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about names now. Whale Smash? Whale Smash. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds not great. <laughs> it sounds too similar to Seal Clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I like it. Yeah. <laughs> We're back on track. Oh my goodness. Uh, LT Smash. Yeah. Okay. That's actually not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. That's Sounds not bad okay. either. Yeah. I mean, I might want to just just to be just to whale be bros. just to be snarky. <laughs> whale Bros is not bad either. <laughs> I might avoid bros and it's smash. Probably, probably get it. Yeah, yeah. Wh- whale smash. Whale mash. <laughs> They did the mash. <laughs> they did the whale Cart- mash. Cartoon Digital Fighting Championship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, name it like LTT Store. I love it. Yeah. Digital. <laughs> digital Ad- fighting game. Adequate video backpack. service. <laughs> <laughs> Leather backpack. Hey, what did we call the new pants? Did we did we break off of it? Oh. No? Break off of what? LTT premium short joggers. Nope. It's, sport uh, joggers. Sport joggers. Yeah, that's what they're called, isn't it's, it? It's what they are. Yeah. The names are what they are. I know. So this is Digital Cartoon Fighting Championship. We'll get that at some point. With Digital Cartoon Fighting Championship with sponsors and prizes. Dot com. Oh, boy. You guys. Um, anyway, this made me really mad, and I'm surprised you didn't think this was a topic, because I was, like, very excited to talk about it. Or I shouldn't say excited. I was very passionate to talk about it. I honestly, this is another one of the things, like, okay, so the, the, the first topic, you were like, oh, you must have been offline, the PS5 thing. I saw it. I just thought it was a meme. Right. I didn't believe it. And then with this, I didn't, I just saw, like, oh, Nintendo's being jerks again, and I didn't really read into it. I didn't know it was about tournaments. Um, I just thought they were like hammering on some streamer for playing their game or something. And I was like, oh, Nintendo's back at it again. Um, but yeah, rough. Hey, we got to mention the folding competition, November 1st. Yeah. Um, it's once the 6th. Okay. I don't know what any of that means, but it's folding month starting November 1st and running until December 6th, 6th. Um, sign up information is available now on LTT forum. There are lots of prizes, including <laughs> what just, gift cards. I just read something Conrad said. <laughs> it got me pretty good. Are you going to share it with the rest of the class? Did you see it? Did you find it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dan, Dan just mm-hmm, found it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Linus Media Group presents Smash Me Bro, a Super Smash Bros tournament. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, oh yeah, I think the it, evolution of trust me, bro. Yeah, the, the relationship it. has expanded. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we're t- we're close. Who are you going to get as a title sponsor? We're really close with our customers. Oh, I I assume D Brand's going to want a piece of that. Yeah, uh, I I haven't actually heard back from them yet, but it's almost it's almost certainly something that they'd be down for if they don't think they can. They're actually going to get buried by Nintendo. Oh, I like it. I like this evolution as well. Just call it Sue Me Bro. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it's sumi is one word so it has kind of like a like a yeah. like sort of like a japanese vibe sumi oh sumi bro yeah sumi bro yeah um okay anyway so uh check it out uh the forum blah blah prizes okay are the prizes actually are the prizes actually listed in the thing okay here we go 
Uh, Fulling month, six. Uh, worst prizes. Here we go. Uh, $20 Steam codes, PC building simulator code. Possibly more to come. There better be more to come. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, there. There's like two grand in LTT store gift cards. Okay, we, we did some stuff. Wow, actually... Like, community members are donating prizes? Yeah. Man, the full-in community... This has been a thing for... Yeah. Never ceases to amaze me. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can get some... Maybe we can get some hardware in there as well. That would Ooh. be pretty cool. Uh, I'll, have to st- I'll have to check with Chewy and see if, um, see if we can do something like that. Uh, if you want to handle the next topic while I send that memo sure. so I don't forget. What do we got left? Um... 82% of the states sues Meta. 41 U.S. states are suing Meta, also previously known as Facebook, uh, for designing its platforms to encourage compulsive behavior in young users through addictive features such as infinite scrolling and persistent alerts. I'm going to take a pause here from what is written in the doc to say, uh, wow, that's cool, really? but they should sue a ton of other people and not single out Meta. I'm not mm. trying to defend Meta here, but like, what? Infinite scrolling? And persistent alerts? Is this not every social media platform? Like, cleave them all. Don't just go for one. What's? It's weird that they're going after. Well, one. remember, part of it is precedent. So if they win this, so they need to win this one. There's precedent. You if don't want to do open up one, battles on every front at the same time. Then you're Germany. <laughs> Fair enough. That's how, that's how you lose. Um, <laughs> you lose hard. Yeah. Um, okay, so if they do win, then they need to keep going. Um, because it's, it's it feels weird, like, diving in front of Meta, who I don't like or care about at all. Um, but, I don't know. Have you tried the Quest 3 yet? No. I've spent some time with it. <clears throat> Adam, who's working on writing the review with some contributions from me, like, we're kind of working together on it. He spent some time with it. It's really good. Okay. Okay. It's okay. like really good though. Either way, I just think if you're if you're gonna go for them for what they're saying they're going at them for, you need to go after more places, including TikTok. Like, come on. Um the lawsuits allege that Meta knowingly ignored the product's effect on children's mental health for the sake of profit, and that its algorithm pushes vulnerable teens towards content Hold glorifying. On. Can I stop you for a second here? Um knowingly ignoring the harms in the pursuit of profit, are they suing meta or are they suing capitalism? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of my point, though. As a capitalist, <laughs> as a filthy capitalist, isn't that just, isn't that just capitalism? Yeah, kind of. Okay, carry on. As long as it's within the extent of the law, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Many studies, including Meta's own internal research, indicate that heavy social media use is associated with depression, anxiety, and lower self-esteem. This is a reason, I'm going on an aside again, this is a reason why I have very specifically been engaging less. And actually, it's been great. I have seen zero downsides. I even know less topics when I show up for WAN Show, and Linus finds that more entertaining. So if anything, only benefits. Uh, Anyways, especially in younger users, Meta argues that the benefits of increased connection outweigh these harms. Mm, Disagree. Anyways, (laughs) uh, discussion question. Are there popular social media sites that don't encourage addiction? I don't know of any. Uh, Could a non-addictive alternative to Instagram even compete? No. Uh, No. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. Social media is inherently this. Eyeball ownership. Yep. Yep. Um, in other words, speaking of ownership, Digital Rev just deleted the entire YouTube channel that was active between 2007 and 2019. That means hundreds of videos from their catalog are gone without warning. At the time of writing, only nine videos remain. The channel's former host, Kai, and former editor, Locke, are still making photography-related content, but they were not informed that the deletion would take place. The deleted videos include years' worth of reviews, how-tos, and photography tips. Um, Several commenters cited Digital Rev as a formative influence in their decision to get into photography as a profession or hobby. And the discussion question here is... Is there any reason to delete an archive like this? The answer been, is, oh, go ahead. I've been kind of wondering about this kind of stuff because what what's with the war on like camera reviews? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like what? Why? It's so well, weird. It's not profitable. Me. Yeah, but why take it all down? Well, so that that back to back to the question. The only reason I can think of 
is if the channel had a complicated licensing agreement with the producer mm. of the content. Because otherwise, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever for you to for you to private a video that is that is as non-controversial as digital rev. Yeah. Um, you will still collect residual revenue on every view on that content in perpetuity. Um, even if it's not very much, even if it's not very much, five bucks is five bucks. Like I, I can't, I can't imagine a future where I would take down any LTT video, even if everyone, everyone was gone, um, and the company didn't exist anymore, and I had, I had no interest in making videos. I'd been canceled or something or whatever, right? Like, I can't think of any reason. Their own community posts are pointing towards videos that they've taken down. Brutal. <sighs> Speaking of things that should be a crime, like, I just, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I get it. If there's if there's a license agreement or something in place and they they can't they can't have them up, but like why these nine videos or ten or whatever they well, no, are? Like these these are playlists that when you click on them are just empty. Oh, if you go to the channel, there's a handful. No, no, no I know. I'm just showing how like it this was done like quickly and not cleanly. They they ripped these videos out. Didn't look back. This is all the videos that remain. These are okay, Elijah in the chat relevant. asks, why am I behind. watching this show right now when I'm supposed to be in recovery and not looking at screens? That's a good question. Sorry, Elijah actually asked, okay, would you take down all the LTT videos for an enormous sum of money? But the answer, like, but the thing is, who would pay doing that? for them yeah. to take their videos down? Yeah. Nobody. There's no incentive for that. Like, I just, uh, I, I, I can't... People are saying storage costs money, right? But yeah, to, to Google. No, it doesn't. To Google. Yeah, It exactly. actually costs nothing. Yeah. There is no benefit to taking this down. And if, if, the, if anything, the if you don't want to store it locally anymore and you don't care about it at all, just delete your local files and leave them on YouTube because it's not sure. costing you anything. Sure. On Fine. I don't know. CS2 players banned for spinning. <laughs> Several Counter-Strike 2 players have gotten VAC banned, apparently for moving the mouse too fast. Players were able to replicate the problem and successfully get auto-banned by setting their mouse sensitivity at 10,000 plus DPI and spinning in place. Some were able to incur a ban within a single match. To see a demonstration of one of these tests, see this timestamp. You should check the video out yourself. Yeah, I'm just going to see I'm, the, I'm you can see the that. rest of it. Yeah, it's you from can see the Tabby rest of it. and Dump. And let's see what else is going on here. But yeah, basically people if if you crank up the DPI in your mouse um and spin around, you can get banned. And okay. I feel a little weird about this one, but this is a thing people do sometimes. Yeah, just to goof around. A sign of frustration yeah. or just goofing around is just whipping your mouse around in Counter-Strike. This is like actually a thing that yeah, happens. Yeah, VAC-banned. VAC-banned from the server. It's in the video. But wow. this is also spin-botting. It's one of like the most old school versions of aim hacking in Counter-Strike we've ever had. Mm. So I understand why they would try to have something that detects a rotational speed that they believe is not really achievable by a human. And then go, okay, let's ban this player. Now, in my opinion, the really big issue with this um, is how, like, not that easy dealing with Valve customer support is. Because if this was, like, a detection thing, mm -hmm. and they just bumped people out, and people could appeal it and be like, oh, they're just messing around. And then... Uh, Valve had the ability to watch the match and see like, yeah. oh, this is just someone like sitting in spawn derping around before the match starts. Then, uh, whatever. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but... Ooh, Hydrox777 <laughs> asks, explain spin botting, please. Spin botting. So, I, I don't actually remember, it's been a long time since I've looked into this, but I don't remember the reason why it needed to spin so much, but it would essentially just, anything that appeared on your screen would just die, basically. Because mm -hmm. your character was spinning around and ready to fire, or actually firing, I don't remember the exact details. Um, 
But yeah, you're just like aiming everywhere, able to shoot everything. I never ran one, so I don't know 100% how it works. Got it. Yeah. You were a, a death machine. You would spin around and everything would die. In other news, what if you were a freedom machine? Oh, it was probably to detect more units. Yeah. What if you were a freedom machine? What does that even mean? Freedom Phone 2.0, oh, yeah. baby. This is interesting. Unplugged. Oh, here, do you want to read it? I'll, I'll, I'm going sure. to screen share. Unplugged is currently taking pre-orders for what they call the Up Phone, which runs their proprietary Rust-based OS, Libert OS, not to be confused with Liberty OS, and features a physical kill switch that unplugs the phone's processor and sensors from the battery. The phone comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and a uh, 108 megapixel 4K camera. Uh, it likewise features an always-on VPN, ad blockers, antivirus, and a suite of apps that Unplugged say definitely won't mine user data. Unplugged also claims that they have hired cybersecurity form Psy uh, Security as an advisor, as well as hiring independent auditors to conduct periodic penetration tests on a, our platform security. They also have white hat programs with uh, prizes as a bounty for reporting vulnerabilities. Unplugged has gotten some criticism from the past from cybersecurity experts for using terms like impenetrable and government grade encryption in its marketing because no device is truly impenetrable and governments don't really have access to encryption that private entities do not also have access to. Unplugged, well, uh, theoretically. Unplugged has, however, stepped away from that language. Unplugged notably was founded by Eric Price, who was the founder of private military contractor Blackwater, uh, then known as something else, now known as uh, not that. What it 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 sounds very different. Um, Blackwater renamed Academy. Oh wow! Okay, that's a different name. Yeah, sounds extremely different. Um, they've rebranded a couple times. Been trying to get away from because like everyone in the world knew like oh Blackwater is scary. Right. So they're like, Academy, we'd read books or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, security, or sorry, <laughs> discussion question. My brain just did that. Um, is it possible that this could succeed where every previous ultra secure phone idea has failed? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it could, it could be an improvement if these weren't things that you were just already going to do yourself? I mean, you could just have a VPN. Yeah, exactly. Um, you could just... Um, I mean, one of, their, one of their talking points is uncensored. You can download any app you want. You can do that today. You yeah. can just sideload side an APK. Load the app. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'm interested in what the Libert OS actually is. I'd be interested to know what it actually is. The problem is I don't think it actually is anything. Um, we talked about this in writer's meeting and we had, th that's where this lead came from because we were thinking, oh, well, we should do a review of it. And the issue with doing a review of it is that right now they're taking a, a crowdfunding approach to getting this thing out. And I don't think oh. since we looked at it, it uh. has made uh. any progress. If I was them and I knew that I needed to sell 6,000 units of this thing before I could move to mass production, um, I, pro I, probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't put this bar on my site. Also, is this to scale? I don't think so. I was just <laughs> wondering that myself. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, do, I need to, do I need to MS Paint this? I had, I had to squint there because I was like, is that supposed to be a 9 or a 0 at the start? Because either of them feel wrong. Okay, here, we're, we're, you know what? We're doing it. We're doing it. We're MS Painting it. Um, because it should be a six, basically, and it doesn't look like it is. Okay, so we're gonna take one of these. <laughs> I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Why, why did you include, like, the back of the circle? Well, it's not that much. Oh, hold on. It might be to scale, Luke. You know what? Oh, I see what you're doing. I think it's to scale. 
Six 943s. Yeah, that would be about that. Okay. Wow. All right. So we both suck. All right. We both just, it's an optical we, illusion. We collectively suck. It's an optical illusion. Yep. Uh, okay, Dan, is it is it APN fixed? I'm so sorry, but I managed to do it. You managed to do it. Oh, good. Thanks, <laughs> I'm so Dan. Sorry. I'm so happy. Um, it took all of that time. It took all that time? You, uh, you will not get Wi Fi calling and you will not get voice over LTE. So you can't have 4G calling. So every time somebody calls you, or you try to make a call, it will drop back onto the GSM 3G network. And uh, I had the issue with my previous phone because it was a similar thing. Uh, you just won't get phone calls. It just won't work properly. Oh. Unless you're in a very, very good service area. Oh. Uh, okay, well that's... Now this is not... Not this is, good in my line is, of work. But this okay. is my rant about okay. the Canadian mobile network system because the phone supports every single band in canada oh but our carriers do not support the phone i'm sorry it. it's like carrier now a bunch of them just merged by the way people did inspect element and found that it is 15.7 percent of the bar which is actually exactly 943 out of 6,000. so it's it is definitely correct and we were definitely wrong cool well i can admit when i'm wrong yeah and when the up phone or whatever they're calling it, um, unplugged phone, up phone exists, uh, I will admit that I was wrong that it will ever exist because I am telling you now it will never exist. Very cool. They're done. They're out. Um, okay. I tried to call Luke and it didn't work though. Mm -hmm. Oh wait. So I can't place phone calls? Only if you have 3G connection. If I have 3G cellular. Which they're phasing out. So... It's uh, it's not as prevalent as LTE. I don't think you can actually use it if you can't do calling. Like no, I, you can, but just not very well. Yeah, but he needs his phone to work. Yeah, it's not triggering the proper carrier provisioning. And it should, because the 100% of... It's even got most of our 5G bands. Uh, but you can't use Wi-Fi calling. You can't do voice over LTE. I ended up having to just get a new phone. I tried to rewrite the Broadcom modem. <laughs> Because he was driving me mad. I'm like, <laughs> like Linus, Linus loves his Fold and I love my, uh, my Sonys. But uh, they just, Canada hates anything that's not a Pixel. Um, okay. Uh, hmm. I see. Let me try to call you. Well, on the plus side, I'll get a lot fewer spam calls. <laughs> I just won't get any I call. see this as an absolute win. <laughs> Um, okay, well, what? I got a yeah, call so from you. so that worked. But wait, can I actually talk to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. If you get the call. If I get a call, I can... Well, what the well, crap? Try... How does that make any sense? Well, because it mm, was able to drop onto the network properly. I mean, try and call Luke now. It might work. Oh, no, See, out of it's... service area. It just, it just dropped. Yeah? No, I hung up. Oh, yeah, well, why so, did it say out of service area? Because what it did is it went, okay, now I have to drop the 3G network and now reconnect to the LTE network. And then so when you try to make a call, it has to drop the LTE, get onto 3G, and then place the call. So it's very intermittent depending on your service quality. This is stupid. Emergency calls only. That one always makes me really mad because if you can place an emergency call, you can place the other call <laughs> if I have an active subscription. <laughs> uh, okay. Top Gear and Floatplane, no, they will not. Uh, they will absolutely not let you do that if you bring your own device. They go, sorry, that's it's not supported on our network. Go away. Uh, and buy one of our other phones. You can place emergency calls with it. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Apparently emergency calls mostly use 2G. Yeah, I was going to say, I think there's actually like government allotted uh, bands for emergency calls. All right, fine. Yeah. I didn't uh, want to rain on your parade, but I think that's a thing. I'll allow it. I'll allow WAN show after dark as well. Oh, let's go. I'm going to push the button. I'm just stoked about this Smash tournament. <laughs> nice. <That> sounds fun. <laughs> I don't know what... irreverent tournament of all time. Yeah, like, I don't know what I'm more excited for. Like, oh, the, okay. the Smash tournament itself or just what it represents? I think I'm more excited about what it represents than yep. anything else. Like, man, I'm going to I'm gonna play in the tournament. I might even pay myself an appearance fee. <laughs> Not because I'm any good at Smash, just, you know, whatever. Yeah. Promoting the event. Can I, yeah. can I sponsor players? 
I, I don't care. Yeah, can, I, can I, can I, I don't uh, give a shit. I'm going to sponsor a player. I think that's, that's cool. <laughs> I'm going to have shirts made. Uh, nice. Nice. This is, this is sick. <laughs> you know who you are. You better learn how to play. <laughs> Actually, no, it's, it's like a, a top, top percentile. It'll be oh, great. Okay. Oh. That sounds good. I, I love it. Hell yeah. Um, let's go. All right. Okay. okay. What, what do we got? Uh, let's see. We already read that one. Linus, have you had any experiences with the Amazon One Palm entry stores? How do you feel about the palm reading technology? Do you see this spreading to other companies for different applications? Palm entry? Oh, like like you use your palm to enter the store? Sorry, I haven't even heard about this. I have no idea what they're talking Amazon's about. Amazon's been testing some really weird stores. I mean, I don't see why it's necessary. You use your palm to pay, present a loyalty card, enter a venue, or badge into work. Why palm? Oh, it's contactless. Oh, because the characteristics of your palm are so much easier to read at a distance compared to the characteristics of your fingers. Well, if it wasn't for not wanting them to have a database of my, of my biometrics, because... Unless this is, yeah, this doesn't sound like something that's stored locally on a device and then, like, encrypted. Um, like, if it wasn't for that, that would be super cool. Right? But, it, but that is the thing. Because if it's just taking an image and then going to a central server, that's super bad. Yeah. And I don't like that at all. Yeah. Huh. Time to chop off people's hands and steal stuff. Oh, boy. Oh, now that's a future. Yeah. Um, wow. That is a, that is a, a thing that could happen now. Cool. <laughs> cool. Current year gets worse. Uh, okay. Dan? Yeah, do you want another one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. It's stupid hard to find all cotton clothes in North America, especially sweats, especially long sizes. Thank you for the dropout. Why do you think it's so rare and not as... Oh, sorry. Uh, why do you think it's so rare and is there more all cotton coming? Um... Oh, I don't know. I mean, honestly, a big part of the reason f that for me is that I don't actually prefer all cotton clothing. I, um, I don't find it as comfortable as blends and I find that it shrinks a lot. And so it's really, really difficult to get the sizing right so that it can be worn out of the box and also worn a year later once it's been through the tumble dryer a couple dozen times. Um, that's, that's my own take on it. I also know there are benefits to cotton. I know that it's easier to um, repurpose uh, once it's done being clothing. Um, yeah, it's, I, that, that's all I know personally about it. Hey, Luke, how do you like your Pixel 8 Pro? Watching hey. WAN live for the first time. Heard your notification go off, thought it was my phone. Oh, sorry. Um... Eh. <laughs> I, I think I'm a very boring person to review phones. Um, yeah, I tried to have him do it before. He wasn't very good at it. Wow. I think one of my Pixel reviews is actually pretty good. So there's that one line of phones that you kind of like every third one and can do a good video about. Well, that's really good. You should be a professional phone reviewer. I never wanted to be, to be clear. <laughs> Just wanted to cover Pixels. Um, I, would, I would probably watch that. Oh, we got the Pixel 8 Pro. Eh. <laughs> Tune in next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I just like pretty much everything I do on my phone is on my home screen. It's like float plane, chess, email, calling, basic web browsing. That's it. Um, it's heavy. The camera bump is like enormous and really annoying and doesn't fit very well in your pocket with anything else in your pocket. Um, the fact that I don't have the menu thing on the back now or you can f slam your finger against it and maybe it'll do something sometimes uh is not an acceptable replacement in my opinion um i had a button before that was also a fingerprint sensor and you could also swipe on and you could find it easily and it was a lot better 
So I lost some functionality. Um, oh, yay, it's faster. Yeah, I don't care. I play chess and send text-based messages. It doesn't matter to me almost at all. Um, but it's an Android phone that has Pixel features, and it's not broken. So it's an upgrade over what I had before. And that's how I feel about it. Good job. Honestly, if I could have my previous phone and it was not broken and it was still supported with security updates, I would rather just have my previous phone again if it just wasn't broken. So like, I don't know. If you had to buy 60 TVs, all the same size and brand, where would you shop? Costco. Do they even let you buy that many? I mean, it's Costco. We bought like, man, I think we, we looked for quantities up to 200 gallons or something like that. And Costco was the cheapest place to buy isopropyl alcohol. Don't ask why. <laughs> they also sell uh, barrel drums. Uh, didn't we buy like a pallet of UPSs from them as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really the thing good. we did. Will there ever be an option to purchase signed items? For instance, the children's book autographed by Linus. Um, yeah. We have a plan for getting rid of all the crap from the tech shop. We're planning to list it on the site as a loot box. <laughs> you get a random item. We have no idea what you're going to get, if it works, if it doesn't, but it'll be signed. So it's a, it's a piece of memorabilia. Sure. And then we're just going to do like a cost averaging thing so that we kind of don't completely lose our shirts on it, but people have a chance of ending up with something cool. Um, and you can just have a piece of video history. Maybe even a cool you piece. Might, yeah, you Maybe might get a, some... Maybe probably a random crappy cable. Probably garbage. Probably garbage, but signed garbage. Yeah. So I'm going to have to sign, I think it worked out to about 600 items. Nice. Yeah, that's going to take some time. Can you forge my signature? You want to help? I used to be able to. It's been a long time. Really? I did it are at... You, are you, okay, A, really? And B, are you going to you're gonna talk about this on camera? <laughs> no, you knew. <laughs> oh, did I? All right. Yeah. Wait, you actually forgot? I guess. Oh, wow. <laughs> we had a conversation about this at one point, because you knew I did it for a while. And then at some point, we had a sit-down conversation, and you were like, you know, we're like an actual company now you should stop doing that and I was like okay and you were like yeah like I'm not like I knew you were doing it I'm not like mad we just should probably stop doing this and I'm like I'm gonna have to bug you more often and you're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like okay <laughs> nobody got paid for six so, weeks <laughs> someone knew that story because we've told that story on Wan Show before which is why I'm surprised you don't remember um, but someone knew that story at LTX and asked me to forge your signature at LTX yeah, I know. They brought it to it. me, and you did a bad job, so yeah. I fixed it. But I didn't have, like, a visual representation at the time or anything. I had to do it from memory, and I was like, wow, I don't know. All right. I don't know. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Luke's phone review in under five seconds. I don't know. All the videos are going to be the same. I'm just going to go, eh, every time. <laughs> uh, almost every phone is just fine these days. Yeah. They're all pretty uh, good. There are exceptions. I can't even use it. I'm left-handed. <laughs> I actually bet you if the calling wasn't an issue, I wouldn't even mind that. Uh, it's really heavy. It's really thick. I don't... Is it's it really much heavier than this? Thick. Is it really much thicker than this? It's way thicker than that. Look at them. It is way thicker than that. Jeez. Include the camera bump. Include the camera bump. Why do they it's even thinner. have camera bumps? It's thinner. Optics, Dan. The camera bump is insane. Just make the phone thicker. It's so huge. And then wait. What am I waiting for? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. It killed that, him. That hurt me. <laughs> Can I have a small ding? Uh, uh, this is definitely heavier. Mm -hmm. And part of it is the length. So it's heavy and it's a tall aspect ratio. So it like, like right. it wants to, it wants yeah. to go. It wants yeah. to be free. Yeah. <laughs> like a bird. So slippy. Like a bird on the wing. Sorry. Um, I've, I've held a Pixel 8 non-pro hmm. and I wish the Pixel 8 pro features and all that other kind of stuff were just in the Pixel 8 non-pro's like 
body. Yep. I would have preferred that phone. Yep. Dear, For sure. Dear LLD, I will use my first ever purchase in the hopes of getting you guys to talk more Final Fantasy VI. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> Linus, Edgar, or Sabine? Sabin? Sabin. Well, okay, those aren't three characters. It's Linus, Edgar, or Sabin. Um, well, I mean, it depends at what point in the game, right? Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Right. I'm, like, actually enjoying it. Okay. Um, I like... Is it Sabin? Do you pronounce it Sabin? Uh, there's a lot of debate. I ran into both of those characters. Because it's one of those things where the... I think the, 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 the Japanese name is, like, Mash or something. Oh, okay. And so the translation is just like whatever it is, um, and to my knowledge, Sabin is not a like like a American English name. Yeah. So, so I just kind of came up with something. Sabine, Sabin, Sabin. I, I don't know. Sure. Um, I've always is Edgar the king guy. Yeah. Okay. It's always been Sabin in my head. So it depends on how you're asking. If you mean just like you know character arc or if you mean battle fight prowess or if you mean like character design um i i was always more of a, a of like an edgar guy but i think they both have limitations um and i and i i, I like both of them I, I like i like both of them the same i i, I i'd say like character design, you know, obviously, you know, Mog is awesome. Um, um, man, I don't know. They're all... What's the dude's name? I just got him in my party, and this is probably going to tell you sort of where I'm Shadow. at. Shadow. Yeah. He's cool. Yeah, he's cool. Shadow's, <laughs> Shadow's badass. Shadow's awesome. <laughs> it's like so cool. Like, he's got, like, Fang, got a, his dog. He's got a dog. Yeah, yeah he's got a sweet. dog. <laughs> dog doesn't like strangers. He'll eat you. Leave him alone. <laughs> I, uh, as a kid, I, um, you know, my reading comprehension was not what it is today. And when they do the introduction for Shadow, I misread it as he did slit his mama's throat for a nickel. Oh. Not that he would. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa dang. <laughs> dang. Um, oh, man. I was surprised when he joined the party. Well, he doesn't always. Oh. Like, I think you can, you can proceed without him. Mm. And that's like a thing with him. So like, no spoilers, but like, watch out for that. It's not a guarantee that Shadow is in the party. Oh yeah, I know. He tells you. He's like, I might just leave at any time. I was like, oh, oh yeah. Wow. And it, it, it is legitimately RNG sometimes. <laughs> and there was one point where he just f***ed off. Like, there's a, there's a segment at some point where he's with you. And he may leave at some time, and he just fucked off after one random encounter, and I had to go it without him for an extended period um, that you're kind of supposed to kind of have him for part of it or something. It was very inconvenient. <laughs> I just finished the... There's this, like, actually insanely long rafting portion. Yep. Yeah. The Lete, Lete like, River. This is going to end now. And then it's like, pick a direction again. Oh, you know like, why, right? No, I know you have to make the right choices. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, I've, yeah, for sure. Okay. But I, I still kept thinking that it would like actually end sooner than it did. Oh no. And then like you get to the fight with Ultros and it's yes. like, you've kind of had the shit kicked out of you yeah. for kind of a while. And if you haven't stocked up items and, and that's stuff. And another, that's another fight where I keep going like, all right, this is a big hit. This will take him down. And then it just keeps going. I'm like, oh my God. Oh no. He's like, a, he's a pain in the butt that early in the game. Yeah. Like he's. Well, now I know you fight him again. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I no, mean, he doesn't it's die. Been, it's been, so I think I think the game it implies was pretty, it. It was pretty obvious. Implies it pretty heavily. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, he has his own theme music that usually is an indication, and a lot of dialogue and stuff. Like it's really involved. It's pretty obvious. Don't tease the octopus, back. kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a literal kid, when I played it, I was like, "Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. I feel I feel personally attacked right now." <laughs> I was that one spooked me because. He like cleaved my entire party for over three quarters of their health and it, like dropped one of them from fairly healthy to dead. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is a little scarier than I thought. And then I realized how overpowered Prey was. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm fine. Prey? Uh, yeah. One of the guys that you have, like Prey, Prey. 
one of the oh bannon yeah oh okay oh so you're playing the modern translation that move is just called health <laughs> in the original translation i wasn't sure what it did so i almost didn't even want to use it oh that's hilarious and then i was like well i should figure it out because he doesn't do a lot of it doesn't do a ton of damage compared to my other characters anyway, so let me try this. And then it was just like, boom. Make sure you're using your rows properly. That's oh, yeah, really I'm not important. Doing that, like, at all. That's really important. So you throw Bannon in the back row, just have him prey on every prey turn, spam. and then you're good. And then same thing, like, even with... It, that's one of the few... Oh, I should have done that. It tells you, like, Bannon can't go down. I should have put him in the back. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, it's one of the few oh. RPGs where... Um, it actually makes sense to play around with your with your lineup even mid fight sometimes. Like if oh, you go, oh crap! I didn't know you could do that. This is bad. Um, yeah. So if you just click over or something like from the menu, okay, like with your D pad. Yeah, yeah. So you just go over, and it should there should be an option for a row. I'm playing with keyboard and mouse. Okay, we'll just use the arrow keys then, <laughs> and just go. Can I just can I give you a SNES controller and a USB adapter? I mean, sure. Okay, I, I will I will do... Oh, wait, I need a ride tonight. Okay. I will give it to you tonight. Sweet. Can I get a ride? Yeah. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so you just go over and then go row, and it'll switch to the defensive position or the... It does use your turn, which sucks. Yeah, yeah. But, but if it you might have, be worth it in certain If you have somewhere scenarios. where you're just like, okay, I, I'm going to switch. You're, you're on healer duty now, and you're only going to use magic. Um, you need to actually get out of the way. Uh, yeah, it, it can be pretty useful. Yeah. Oh yeah, how are you gonna how, how are you gonna do uh, Sabin's blitzes on a keyboard? I've I've, I've done I've made it. it work, the, but it's it was fine, and then they gave me an angled one, and I was like, yeah. oh no! But and you can I, do it. I just did it. Okay, there's ones that will be worried, impossible. But, okay, yeah, you will need a controller at some point. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. I had like down left or something that I had to do, and I just yeah. stared at it for a second, was like, oh no, and okay. then just tried to. Do it sync. What's Aura Bolt ca called? Because that's what that is. The down left. Or, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Down diagonal left one. Uh, I feel like Conrad's going to know. Um, oh, man. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Um, that's okay. It's not that important. I'm not going to remember. I've only used it once. Okay. Because I saw the angle thing and I was like, I don't really want to do that again. What are you enjoying about the game? Um... The story's like actually decently engaging. I wasn't necessarily expecting that a ton. Really? After all the time I've spent talking yeah, about it? Yeah, but you were like six. I've played it like... Man, I've played it all the way to completion at least two or three times. And I've played the first half over a dozen times. Mm. Like all the way into adulthood. It is a great game. I, I actually very much enjoy the graphics. Um, I, I am playing the pixel art remake, yep. so that might help out a little bit, but like the pixel art's good. It's good. It feels good. It it makes me kind of mad sometimes because like it just feels like a good game. Like within minutes of starting it up, I was like, yeah, I want to play this. Like I actually want to play this right now. I'm not just doing this because I want Linus to do other stuff. Like this is this is cool. I'm engaged. I want to go through this cave and find this thing and keep this chick alive and do whatever. Like I want to I want to actually do these activities that the game is trying to get me to do. And the graphics are good enough that they're interesting. And like I'm I I know that a game is working for me when I start doing things naturally that are like the reason why I like Bethesda games. Mm. Like I started hunting in caves for secret passages. Yeah. And enjoying that. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I like this game. I know when I start doing that type of stuff, I'm yep. like, okay, I'm engaged. I care a lot. Yep. I want to find all the little secrets. I want to do matters. all this type of stuff. Treasure does feel like it matters. Treasure actually matters. I that's, like that about games too. That's huge. It is so boring. It's one of the things that I hate about Zelda games. Yeah. That every treasure chest unless it's at the center of a dungeon, is a f***ing rupee. Yeah. Like, it, it sucks. Yeah. Like, I want there to be... Uh, that's something that... Um, oh, oh. I'm back on Fantasian again. <sighs> and that's something I so do like about salty. the game. Oh, okay. Is that... Treasure matters. There can be a random chest at any stage in the game, like in the first dungeon, 
and it could be something that is impactful for the entire rest of the game like it unlocks like part like of that. it unlocks part of like your that. like like tech tree and there's no other way to unlock it like you actually need to explore you can find cool stuff by exploring something that i was going to say i do really like is that you're talking about how treasure matters i like that you have to use it mm. i think mm -hmm. that's cool i i am the type of person that will naturally be like oh a potion guess i'll never use this because i might need it someday and then yeah. I'll forget that I can even use them and then just beat the whole game. And it's just like, whatever. Um, but like you, if you don't use them, your team's just going to be dead all the time. Yeah. So like you actually need to use your stuff and like the economy matters because having a, a tent or whatever is like actually pretty important at times. I will say that it does fall into the same trap that most RPGs do in that the economy makes a ton of sense for the first like 10 hours of the game. And then you just make too much and then... And then it just sort of loses all semblance of... That's one of the things that I just... I, I hate to come back to this again because I know it's such a sensitive topic, but that's something I loved so much about Breath of the Wild is the economy never scaled to ridiculous land where you're getting 100,000 rupees for every mm -hmm. stupid random encounter and you can just afford all the armor in the game. Yeah every piece of armor was like 500 rupees or whatever. And it was always difficult to raise 500 rupees of money. Not Well, not difficult, but it was always some, like it, you didn't just have enough money to just buy everything because everything was constantly breaking, just like in the real world where you were always buying stuff and always, always treasure hunting. It always mattered. It was always important. I did. I, I also found out in a negative way but i'm okay with that i want to be very yeah. clear um recently that you need to kind of do the things now uh or the game might take that opportunity away from you um mm. i got to a town that felt really big south figaro yep. or whatever it's called um it felt pretty big and established and i was like okay i'll come back here later yeah no you won't yeah and there was like some dude that like wouldn't talk to me unless i gave him alcohol or something cider yeah yeah and i was like i think i kind of figure uh, yeah, i want to progress the game though i'll like come back and do this later and then it's like literally the next thing that happens is they're like that place doesn't exist anymore i'm just like oh, okay uh, i guess i won't go do that thing um all right I, and i'm like trying to actually do all the content i just didn't think they were going to delete the like what third city at this point <laughs> they just like everywhere i go they're just like you're never going back there again empire's f up man yeah like yeah 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 you gotta do something about it and you know what yeah but that's the thing is like i i like that they establish real stakes yeah. like it's not just i care there's an ambiguous motive for someone to something because whatever like it, it's it's really grounded there's a there's a there's an empire that is like actually doing like bad burning stuff. down cities and just wrecking everything in all in the name of of you know conquest and acquisition and and it feels i don't know it feels very on the one hand like a global conflict but they, on the other hand they make it really personal yeah the, this place that you visited now it's and gone you were it's wiped a slave out. yes to them yes what are you going to do about it yeah it's uh, like, yeah right, i don't know it's cool. I, I love it. I, I can't believe you haven't mentioned the music. I love the music Music's so very much. good. Music's very good. However, I haven't heard the redone tracks for the Pixel Remaster. It's good. Would you be enjoying it as much if the graphics looked like that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, seriously, though. That's my Terra. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I don't think I have this person yet. Not she, that that's a problem. No, she's but like, the main character. Oh, her name's Terra? Oh. What's her name? I think I accidentally rewrote it. <laughs> I, d I didn't do that to anyone else. <laughs> oh, I didn't no. do that to anybody else. All right, but. fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's Tara. Yeah. I didn't want to rewrite it, to be clear. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't, I, don't mind, I don't mind pixel graphics. I don't know. I, I am appreciative of art styles, not necessarily just fidelity. Oh, apparently I had the wrong one. Apparently that was not the Pixel Remaster graphics. So does she look more similar to the one I on the far left? I think she does, actually, yeah. Hold on, what's this? Is, is this it? I feel like that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah, like the dude, the dude... Locke or Lucky or whatever? Yeah. He looks like the, one, the third one, I think. This one? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's him. 
yeah, I think it looks cool. I actually kind of, I actually kind of like his old, uh, bulkier look. Yeah, me he too. He looks kind of pinner here. Yeah, definitely more like kind of swashbuckling thief and less just like fits the theme. Brute. But um, yeah, I also don't know what's up with these super super pointy shoes. Was that really the intent? No idea. Might have been easier. It might be an asset. Oh no, this is the new one. I don't know. I was going to say on the old one, it might be an asset they use for something else as well, so they save data. Um, the only thing I don't like so far, genuinely, like whatever everything criticism about the you're game, going to have, there's no way I can accept it. Yeah, that's fine. It's a perfect game. No, it's not a perfect <laughs> the game. The only thing I don't like is I, I have very, very little experience with Final Fantasy games. I don't remember Final Fantasy VIII working this way, but I haven't played it since I was like 12, so maybe it did. I don't know. Um, but the turn system, I hate it. Like a lot. I have it set yeah. to wait. Actions are still happening in the background while I'm trying to select things. So oh, yeah, get good. It doesn't seem to be happening. Yeah, get good. I think Even that's wait a doesn't bad... wait much. Oh, it like ends up resuming anyways. So what it what wait will do? I think do, that's a bad system. Uh, I forget what I forget what the distinction is. So active means that everyone's turn counters are running all the time, um, and then wait. I think what it does is if they act, they will wait for you to finish their turn before it starts to count again. But that doesn't mean they can't act if they had already reached the end oh, okay. of their their yeah. active time battle. It's a, it's called ATB, and there's I I should give you the manual. I have my manual from when I, I was talked like to this was six. again this is a sign that I actually cared about the game but yeah. I went into the adventurers guild thing near the beginning of the game and I actually yeah, yeah. talked to everyone and like learned these things nice and I decided to put it on wait um, but it, it doesn't yeah it doesn't actually like pause the game and I don't find sorting through menus quickly to be a skill that I care about um, and also I've been really enjoying it as like a side monitor game. Mm. So I'll leave it there and be doing something else for a while. Sure. Maybe I'm talking to Emma. Maybe I'm playing with the birds. Maybe I'm, I don't know. Anything, maybe playing another game sometimes even. I'll just leave it on the side monitor and then I'll play for a little bit and then get distracted by something else and it's fine, whatever. But now I, I can't ever pause really. You can pause. Maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a specific yeah, pause. But start I want to be able to just stop. Oh yeah, no start button just pauses the battle. Okay. And well, it just it just stops. I don't know what that is. Maybe escape or something. Okay. I'll give you a controller tonight and I'm gonna give you my manual. You'd like it. It's full of like artwork and stuff. Cool. Like it's actually I awesome. used to really like old manuals, so yeah. I probably will like it. Yeah. Um, oh no, Luke wants an idle Final Fantasy game. <laughs> No, that's not what no, he's asking no, no, for. No, 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 I don't want it to play while it's sitting there. My whole point is I want it to pause. Like something that I really like about Slay the Spire and FTL. And maybe now that I know you can pause in combat if you press a button, it'll be the same thing as FTL. Yeah, Because in be FTL, fine. you just press space bar and the whole game pauses. So it's great for a side mo You can leave it for two days. Yeah, no, you, you can pause it. It's okay, fine. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that should don't you worry. help that, but I still wish it was just turn-based. Apparently, it's while you are in a submenu. So it's so that you don't have to like quickly navigate to which magic spell you want to cast. Maybe I'm using it wrong or maybe I switched it back off of wait and don't remember that. But I was in sub, I was like selecting spells on whatever her name is. Um, Tara. Tara. And actions were happening in the background. I was trying to, I was trying to like read the descriptions of what the spells did. And the game's just playing itself. I'm like, bro, stop. <laughs> I can tell Relax. you what they do. Fire casts fire. Yeah, I figured that one out. Cure casts cure. Yeah, but I wasn't sure and what cure scan did. scans. I don't know what scan is. Oh, uh, 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 oh, shoot. What's, um... The other translation of it or crap. whatever. Crap. Uh... I have, like, four spells with her or something right now. Scan characteristics of enemies. Uh, what's it called? Ah, uh, it's escaping me. Uh, crap. And where do you see your MP when you're in battle? I don't remember. I only see your health. And then there's this like other number beside it, but it doesn't seem to change when I cast spells. So Libra. Don't... Libra is scan. Huh. Okay, hold on. What's her what's her I don't know if I have that spell? yet. She... I don't have ice yet. Someone just said ice. I don't have that uh, yet. Ice is way later for Terra. It's very, yeah, very natural that I would get. I'm not worried about that as a spoiler, but I don't have that yet. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's not. Yeah, no. She she's she's a she's a natural magic user, so she'll just like learn spells. Um, man, I don't, re I don't remember the, I don't remember the order. I don't remember the fourth spell she gets. Oh, antidote. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's the but first like, four. Well, like, there's so many different status things. Oh, my God. Like, there's a blind or something. Yeah. Couldn't figure out what would stop that. Really? So I just had to rest. What? Yeah. Uh, eye drops. I don't think I have any. Maybe that's why I couldn't figure yeah, it out. Yeah, that's your problem. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you should get some. I didn't have anything that would solve it. There's a cure-all item, but you can't that's buy it. probably hyper expensive. You oh. can never buy it. So be really careful with that one. Okay. Yeah, I think it's called Remedy or something like that. I was that. kind of surprised you could buy Phoenix Downs. Uh, you'll go down a lot. So I'm really glad that you can buy Phoenix Downs. Okay. So far, I've only used two. Yeah, okay. But I have had to use Well, two. I was six. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> one of mine was, I, I just told you, it was the, the octopus guy. Yeah. All my people were fairly healthy. Yep. And they just bonk. I'm like, oh, okay. Well. Yeah, when he does tentacle once... And it like takes down one of your guys and you're like, oh, I got to watch out for this. And then it turns out he can multicast it. And you're like, oh, really? No, yeah, no, that's what happened to me. Yeah, I he know. He hit all four of them yeah. at the same time. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. And it's... It, I um, don't think he had done it once yet. Oh, really? He just... Yeah. Because no one had taken any noticeable damage and I then just got one the shot. the single target one hits ever so slightly harder, mm. but the four target one still hits really hard. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. Anyway, it's a great game. I love that game. And uh, now that you're playing it, I'll, I'll probably play it again. But I, I sure hope you got the sprint shoes. I have like multiple pairs of that. I just don't have eye drops. <laughs> I just looted them. I didn't buy them. You'll need one pair of sprint shoes. <laughs> I didn't buy them. Oh. Oh, you just found them. Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right. I think I bought the first pair and then I found more or something. I don't know. But I have multiple pairs. Hit me, Dan. Sure. Yeah, we got lots of potentials too. Hey, LLD. Hello from Michigan. What do you think has been the most detrimental to gaming? Games as a service, microtransactions, or loot boxes? Oh, wow. Those two things are... Well, no, not... No, you could, no, you could no, have no, no, one no, no, no. without the other. Mm -hmm. You could have you, loot boxes without microtransactions? Yeah. It's like square and rectangle. Yeah, you could have expensive square loot hole. boxes. That wouldn't be micro. I'm not doing it. Don't look at him. <laughs> You could definitely have games as a service without microtransactions, though, or games as a service without loot boxes, or loot I think boxes without games as a service. They're definitely separate, yeah. Um, Out of all of those things, I do not think games as a service is the worst one. No, I think games as a service is probably the most palatable in terms of uh, predictable recurring revenue for developers without being completely predatory. I don't like it. I think it's kind of a bad thing, but... Out of the current options, I think it's the least of the evils. I th Microtransactions versus uh, loot boxes. I actually agree with your argument here. I think loot boxes are a subset of microtransactions, and I do think they are a worse, a worser. I also agree with that. Theoretical handshakes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm satisfied. Because, <laughs> I mean, loot boxes are just microtransactions with gambling. <laughs> You know what, I take it back. Gambling makes everything better. Let's go to kick. Rescinded handshake. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> LLD. Do you have any opinions on the popularity of hardcore gaming and players' willingness to risk everything? Okay, I think I curated this. I have no what idea what mean? this means. Yeah, oh, I, no, I potentialed no, this. No, no, yeah. no, no. I, I can't believe I didn't get this. Uh, there's like, uh, I think it's in RuneScape. I know it's in... Uh, oh, like realism wow. mode. Kind yeah. of thing, like if like you die, permadeath. your character's dead. Yeah. Oh, uh, that makes so much more sense. I think it's cool. Why not? It's an interesting, interesting twist. Something you don't have to play it. <laughs> like, no one's making you. That'd be a really interesting MMO. That's a thing. Like all the way back to level zero. RuneScape and WoW. Your character dies, it's dead. What's called that? Really? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Is it hard mode or is it? Uh, it's called hardcore in WoW. Yeah. I think it's called Iron Man in RuneScape. Yeah, Iron Man. I think. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That rings a bell. And you think about some of the mechanics in a game like WoW that are just, they'll just kill you. And it's like, okay. Is there PvP in in like... Uh, so in the World of Warcraft version, uh, there's something called Mokgora where like you can duel in hardcore, but in a traditional duel, you never actually die. It ends when someone gets to one HP and then all their debuffs and everything are cleared and the duel ends. No one actually dies. Someone has to, like, be forcibly forfeited, basically. Um, if you mock Gara, you have to go through a bunch of... I've never done it. I don't know. 
but you have to like accept it a few times or something. Like you have to, it, it's very clear to the user that you're agreeing to this thing and it's a duel to the death. And if you kill the person, you get like a permanent buff or something that says that you've actually like murdered someone. <laughs> I think. Let me look it up. I like that a lot. Because like, you kind of you kind of did. Wow, hardcore. Um. Okay, this is not. A, people have called events the same thing, so it's not the easiest thing to like find details on. Apparently there's a hardcore mode in Diablo. The first thousand players get their name on an in-game statue for Diablo 4. In RuneScape, not only is there permadeath, but you can't trade or receive items from other players in hardcore Iron Man. So WoW has that as well, but it's a community add-on that enforces the restriction. Mm -hmm. It's not WoW that enforces the restriction. And in... In my view of it, if you don't play with the add-on, you're playing a fake-o version. Because being able to just... Okay, so every MMO has this issue. Eve, I'm sure RuneScape has it. I know WoW has it. Everything. People just buy gold. Mm -hmm. If you can buy gold, you can buy items. If you can buy items, you can buy, buy with real-world dollars, effectively skill... Um, and in a hardcore situation, a very significant advantage compared to everyone else around you. So if you're just going around buying all of the items you can possibly buy to be way stronger than you're supposed to be, are you really playing hardcore? And like the whole reason, like I play with my brother, the whole reason why we like playing it, I haven't played in a while, but theoretically we play. Um, the whole reason why we like playing is because it like forces you to go slower you, we play together, so we play in a duo. So we can trade with each other, but we can't trade with anyone else. So, like, our professions really matter. Because now we're, like, making things that we can use. We can't get these things from other people. You only have a fixed amount of professions you can even take. So we had to be, like, strategic about what professions each one of us was going to take so we can benefit each other the most possible way. Like, there's all this, like, you have to pay attention to all these subsystems so much more. It makes, like, any random encounter super tense because, oh, what, if you miss three or four times in a row and the random boar you're fighting crits you three or four times in a row, well, you're going to be freaking out because if you screw up, if, if this keeps going poorly, your character's going to get deleted. <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, the, I can't find the sorry. actual details on, like, what the buff that you get is or anything else like that. I think it's cool that they have the system in the game. I don't think I'd ever do it, but... There's a $100,000 hardcore tournament ongoing? That's awesome. Wow. The people got to be level 60 and streamers legit logging in, getting carried through people giving them gold and gear so they can get into the tournament. Yeah, like that doesn't... Feel like hardcore to me. Get the add on, play it for real. Anyways. With the Unreal Engine promoting AI powered smart NPCs in future games, should GPU testing now include an AI benchmarking suite like Stable Diffusion for generic A to A comparison? Absolutely, but it's going to take us some time to come up with meaningful benchmarks um, as they pertain to gaming. Linus, do you keep any backup computers at home? I would go crazy if I had to fix my computer on the regular. You're crazy. I think we talked about this recently. Luke, did I ask you to guess how many computers I have in my house? No. Okay. Guess how many computers I have in my house. What? Okay, so... Are we... Are these PCs? Like, are you counting servers? They run Windows. Okay. Are you counting VMs? Anything capable... Anything currently running a VM counts as one. Okay, fair enough. Twenty-five? I don't actually know. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's see. Mine and Yvonne's office machines. 
Okay. There's a little like uh, thin client in the family room upstairs that I haven't actually really used. I just like got it to kind of tinker with it's it. It's there. If it runs Windows, it counts. Um, does it count if it leaves the house sometimes? See, I wasn't sure about this. I included in my crappy brain math your uh, the Asus thing that you have. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I meant like the four gaming laptops in the van. Oh, I didn't think of those. I think those count. Seven. Darn it. Um, okay. So then there's the five in the land center. Yeah. So we're up to 12. There's five laptops in the land center that I haven't removed yet. So we're up to 17. I actually did count both of those because I was pretty sure that was true. <laughs> um, there's the play button PC. 18. There's my two... Flow X13s, my old one and my new one that I need to transfer everything onto and my framework. So, sorry, what are we up to? I think that's 21. Is that 20? I think that's 20. I think I was at 17. Oh, I thought you were at 18. Oh, wait, okay. no. Oh, no. Yeah, 18 because I play button PC was 18, I think. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's 21. There's Yvonne's laptop. So that's so 22. I already got obliterated because he hasn't even got to the server room. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Server room. <laughs> so in the server room, <laughs> There's, um, do I count a test bench? It if works it, right it now. Runs, yeah. Okay. So 23, three, are we, were we at 22? I, I, can't, I can't even, I have no Ram. Um, <laughs> we were at 21 with the laptops. Okay. Well, 22 or 23, one of the two. Sure. Uh, and then there's the NVMe server. So 20, let's say 23. Then there's the hard drive server, 24. And then there's, um, if yeah. you can only find one more, I'm a god. What? Why? Well, I said 25. Did you? I think so. Oh, okay. I'll try and find one more. For, oh, right, right, right. Uh, ally. Hey! 25. Um, now you have to find zero more. Do laptops count? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we counted laptops. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Does Maybe it not count, all of them. But... Does it count if it's in my house right now, but on its way out? Like it's on a rack to load into my car. How long was it at your house? A year. Was this like a fairly permanent fixture? Like this is your thing? It was my old ally, my I and Neo. Oh. <laughs> I want to say no because I want to be right, but I think that counts. Okay, okay. So 26. Yeah. Um, there's probably another computer in there, but that Do one was like you have a media like center PC in the, at the downstairs TV? No. So I, I, have the, I have the fiber optic HDMI working great now. So I just like plunk it into my computer i just use my computer from in there or i had the play button pc in there for a while but then yeah i just got bored of dealing with that um because it's <laughs> no it works great now right you had to update it for whale land or whatever yeah right? but it has yeah. a thunderbolt yeah. gpu um and so the performance isn't as good and i'm kind of sitting here going well what i'm just to plug, to yeah. plug in an hdmi cable do yeah. that anyways you might as well yeah i might as well have like the performance of a 7900 xtx if i'm going to be gaming at 4k 120 um so yeah it's it's awesome so 20, 26. So in response, it's not, uh, sorry, I wasn't like showing off or anything. You asked if I, why I don't have a spare computer. And the answer is I definitely have a spare computer. <laughs> I will, I will typically Lots. just plug in an, um, an R, uh, Flow X13 to laptop. To be fair, if, if you did, if, I, if my computer's down. Car content and you didn't have a ton of cars at home, it would be really weird. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing, right? I'm always, I'm always trying stuff. I'm always playing around with stuff. Like I can only use one computer at a time. But sometimes, it's, oh, I forgot about the VR PC 27. Um, <laughs> like I'm not going to move my computer around every time I, I, I actually did a review of a VR headset recently, the big screen beyond. Like what? I'm going to like, cart my computer and no 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 like i actually do this for a living so it's um yeah. it's just a bit of a different calculus yeah Is Luke, that you uh, dan that said you're at six yeah i think it's at six or something like that wow a plus laptop i feel so not with it i'm at we, like we don't three. count the imax otherwise i'd have more than linus i want to i want a fourth but no one has told me that i can buy the wood accent parts yet mm. if i can i'll have a fourth but I know I'm not gonna butt the line or anything. I'm waiting. I'm uh I'm downsizing soon. There's a couple that need to get sold. All right, sorry. What's uh, what's next? Next, Luke. Hey. I know you have challenges with dyslexia. Yeah. God, I hope I spelled that right. Uh, what about <laughs> spoonerism? That's one I discovered. That's a thing recently. What? Did you know the term spoonerism? I didn't. No. That's Reversal not. of the initial letters or syllables of two or more words. 
I have a half-warmed fish in my mind for half-formed wish. Ah, a blushing crow for a crushing blow. Isn't this just like a, just a symptom of dyslexia? And doesn't, to a certain degree, just like everybody do that? Or is that just me normalizing my own stuff? <laughs> no? I do. I do it verbally. Like, I'll do it verbally by accident, but I don't think I would ever read it by accident. I don't know if this would even still be a problem, because I, like, never write things. But there was, <laughs> there was a time in high school, I swear I wasn't doing it on purpose, where I would write words and I'd, like, leave... I wouldn't even, I, I wouldn't have to think about it, but I'd like leave one of the letters blank and then go back and put it. I have no idea what the heck was going on with that. Hmm. Not a clue. That I that might be completely unrelated. <laughs> I have no idea. That was very odd. Someone, saw, I didn't even know that I did it. Someone saw me do it once and I was like, wait, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> I have super weird issues and then with I, yeah, I spelling. Have, I haven't had that happen to me at all in years, but yeah. I don't write that often anymore. But I was, I mean... I was taking notes in the gym and stuff, and that never happened. So, I don't know. Maybe I just stopped doing weird things. Is your, is your spelling okay? No. Because <laughs> what I'll do is I'll, like, at the top of the page, I'll spell a word wrong. I just didn't roast me right there. Oh, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ask again. <laughs> Neither of us can spell very well. Yeah. He was like, is your spelling okay? And I was like, no. <laughs> spelling matters. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't I'm think up. it doesn't matter. I just struggle I just with can't it. do it consistently. I'll, I'll be writing a page and I'll not know how to spell a word at the top, and then like two sentences later, I'll know how to spell the word. Did I ever tell you about uh, in grade? I think it was grade one uh, when my teacher held me back for recess and I had to break out of the classroom because I couldn't spell a certain word. She didn't believe that I couldn't spell it, but I genuinely like had no idea. I don't remember what the I think it was like library or something. Mm. Um, and yeah, that R. I remembered that First one, it tough. was on some of our uniforms. I went to a private school. It was like a private Christian school. Um, the, uh, but yeah, some of our uniforms had that word on it. I think it was like, I don't remember. But yeah, some of the uniforms had the word on it, but not the one that I was wearing. So I like, she was like, you can't come out of the classroom. But she laughed. But she like, I think she locked the door or something. I don't think you're allowed to do that. This was a private Christian school. They can do what the heck they want. Um so I crawled out of one of the windows and found a kid that had the right uniform on, memorized how to spell it really quick, ran back inside. And then flubbed it anyway. Wrote it down, did get it right, and then it's like bashed on the door until she came back. And then she just like looked at me really weird and was like, I guess you can go. And then I went and hung out for recess. And I'm just like, this has been a problem forever, is my point. <laughs> This is not like a new thing. Uh, I don't think it was school. I don't think it was school. I don't remember what it was. How much power does it take to run the pool loop? How many computers would it need to cool to break even with the running costs? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, not that much. I mean, each of those pumps is probably like 20, 30 watts or something like that. But as long as it's dumping more than that amount of heat into the pool, which I'm very certain that it is, the... Oh. Hey, did uh, you ever spoil, figure... uh, No, no spoilers. There's going to be a video where I demonstrate that we're definitely dumping heat into the pool. Um, did I'd you say... ever figure out the one loop? No. Oh. But it works perfectly now. So after you and I like looked at it, so I think it was an airlock or something like and that. And we probably worked yep. it out. And we, yeah, we, by, by, by blocking off the one, yeah, they, they both blow really cold air now. And cool. it's awesome. Nice. Um, so that video is coming. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely worth it with even just the systems that are on it now. But from like a from like a purely you know pure cost perspective no i no i'd be way better off just dumping the air into my house and then using a heat pump which is way more efficient than like any kind of resistive heater or anything to just uh or a heat pump to do the cooling it doesn't matter the point is no it makes no sense and yes that's okay there that's what i'm trying to say i'm stunned i have so many funny stories from this school i was only there for like three years um i'm stunned they're still around they were a very small, like, in the absolute boonies school. I remember one time I was I was super pissed when I came home because there was a creek 
that ran along like one of the sides of this school. Um, and we would race like little boats that we would make in the Creek. And I was like playing with my boat while I was in class and the teachers took it from me. And I was like, I, I thought it was like theft. Like I was pissed. <laughs> I remember like complaining to my parents and my parents just being like, um, I, you shouldn't have played with it in class. And I was like, what do you mean? She stole from me. <laughs> like, this is not okay. Yeah. Doesn't the Bible say something about that? <laughs> yeah. Like, what, Let's are you, go. what are you talking about? <laughs> It's like <laughs> you're you're like five, so it's like one of the most important things to you you've like ever had. <laughs> it's like whatever. I don't know. It's funny. Um, next one. Hello, Dan and his merry men. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any employees that you feel deserve more recognition but aren't in a role where they would typically be in the spotlight? P.S. Please rerun the Uncle Linus bottle. Like all the developers. Yeah, I mean, man, like even even Yvonne is a perfect example of someone that I have to go out of my way to make it so that people have any idea that she does anything here. Mm -hmm. um, and people just, the, the number of times I've seen it assumed that she's the boss's wife, which is just yeah. so reductive. Is That's that a word? I, ho I hope it's a word. It is to me. <laughs> yeah, but everything's a word to you. Um <laughs> Present a subject or problem in a simplified form, especially one viewed as crude. You know what? I'm going with it. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's so it's so dismissive and disrespectful. And honestly, it's it's a problem that everyone, other than the people on camera, have. It's one of the reasons I go out of my way to, you know, thank the team and and talk about how we did something. The problem is that sometimes that's not necessarily good for business. People like having a, you know, a personality they relate to. They like things feeling personal. And so, you know, we've tried, we've played around with it a lot of times. It, when I put, we did X in the title of a video versus I wasted $500 on Y. Honestly, I even just thinking better. right now, that's more clickable for sure. Of course it is. Yeah. And so it's, it's a challenge, right? Because in order to do the right thing for the team, sometimes I have to take the narcissistic path, right? which is like, f***ed. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> all these, all these pressures to not do it. And then the algorithm's just like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't make the rules. It's not even the algorithm. Remember, you can understand the platform so much better if you replace the word algorithm with audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The audience chooses. The audience clicks what it clicks. I don't yeah. make the rules. They're the boss, man. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean... Yeah, like, I, has, everyone, has, logistics, like, entire departments of people who get no recognition at all, but yeah. we, you know, we need them to function. I have, I have old school members of the team that are like, yeah pillars of the community have worked here for a long time. I don't know if they've ever been on camera. I guess as, as I think, I think I know Jaden is in like an LTX exclusive at the very least. And I know he's in the background of some video from like forever ago, but I don't, I don't know if he's been in anything more recently. I don't really think so. I don't know if AJ's ever been on camera. AJ's been here since like, 2016 like six years or something yeah <laughs> he's never been on camera that's crazy like they're there yeah i have a lot of examples from the dev teams um mastery yeah. asks who gets the most praise and recognition <laughs> me <laughs> but <laughs> there's, a, there's another edge on that sword yeah yeah also gets the pretty most sharp too everything else yeah when something goes wrong i'm damned if i do i'm damned if i don't if I tell the true story that it was actually someone else's fault and I had nothing to do with it and no way to prevent it, then I'm throwing my team under the bus. Yeah. And if I accept the responsibility and I do the adult thing, then I'm an incompetent f wit. So I can't win. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it both ways. Yeah. Hi, Linus. You are rich and frugal. <laughs> Was this written by you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing with all your excess money? Bill Gates didn't leave any for his children. 
<laughs> what are you doing with your excess? Who the f curated this? Uh, not me. Not me, actually. That was me. Hey. Uh, um, well, Building stuff. Yeah. I, 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 okay. We have a lot of revenue. We, um, we, our revenue is greater than our costs, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not doing things with it. Um, yeah. I would say everything from, everything from wise investments for the future, um, just in case things go sideways, to uh, building future business opportunities so we can continue to grow and provide opportunities for upward mobility for our team. To, um, you know, I finally, over the last few years, started just blowing some of it on myself. I yeah. live in a nicer house now. I drive a pretty okay car. Um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty okay. Holly debated. Yeah, it's, it's pretty okay. I yeah. mean, there's people here who wouldn't, who wouldn't take one for free because they're petrol heads or whatever. But like, you know, I think it's pretty okay. Um, I'd take one for free. And I'm building a badminton center. I'd probably sell it. I'd I would 100% sell it. Yeah, I don't there's even no way. Know. There's no way. You I wouldn't Don't even know if I would drive it. Really? Not even once. Just in case or it like breaks or something or like yeah. yeah. I mean, that's fair. It's broken a couple times already. Yeah. Um through no Did you know Yvonne curved it? Oh, is that what happened to the the rim or something? Yeah. Yeah. Someone showed a sort of picture. I was so unhappy. Anyway, that's um unfortunate. Yeah. Those are probably really expensive. You know what's really funny <laughs> is my You know what's crazy? What? If you do that in my car, it like, wouldn't matter at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, the wheels would get shinier, the value would go up. <laughs> so my grandfather um, was in the hospital. Uh, self-repairing. Uh, a couple weeks ago. And we went to visit him. And he made kind of a, um, kind of a misogynistic joke about whether or not I let Yvonne drive my car. Oh, boy. And I know he was joking because he's not like that. Okay. But, you know, I'm still going to... Make sure that I, you know, okay. The follow up of this, even if it is a joke or not, play this to... hand correctly is that it is our car, yep, that was purchased with our money. Um, and it would be ridiculous for me to restrict or otherwise try to dictate Yvonne's access to a shared vehicle that we both paid for. Um, and uh, you know, because it was also kind of so it was a joke about, you know pants wearing in the relationship, but also the old stereotype of, uh, of bad women drivers. Right. Like it was, it was, it was kind of a, it was a two pronged joke that like, like he's like 80 something like chill. Like I, I, he, sometimes old people say stuff that is, you know, not in line with modern sensibilities. And we all, we, that's part of being accepting sometimes <laughs> is accepting that some people don't have the same acceptance as you and just, yeah. they're not going to be here much longer. So it doesn't matter. Just chill. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I said all of that and, um, <laughs> and, and he's like, um, but aren't you worried she's going to wreck it? And I was like, no, she's actually a really good driver. Blah, blah, blah. Don't forget. Yvonne's also Asian. So, they're uh, not racist. Yeah. I actually promise you that. But like, that doesn't mean they don't make off color jokes, jokes yeah. sometimes. And, and so, um, Yvonne left to go. Parents are a hell of a thing. Yeah. Yvonne left to go get, um, like my sister and my kids. Cause they hadn't come right away. Um, just in case his condition was like upsetting to the kids or something. But uh, like I, I had to talk him into letting the, the, the grandkids come. Uh, so that they could see him. Um, and I was like, no, you don't look that bad. I think it's okay. And so, so anyway, Yvonne went to go get everyone, walked in and was like, I curbed the car. Oh. Right after that interaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. I, uh, I ran the poll in floatplane chat. Uh, would you rather have one of Linus's Taycan or 25 of Luke's Acuras? <laughs> Okay, hold on a second. You couldn't afford 20... You could. Oh. <laughs> Nick uh, Nick sent me some all capitals team's message to remind us about that. You actually could. It's pretty split, actually. Yeah. You do have to remember that my car is a little old. Yeah, how are you going to drive 25 Acuras at once? No, we, we, we thought this <laughs> they through. They last forever. So the Dan's theory. So the first one that we came up with was uh, you do uh, a different color scheme for every single month of the year. Where are you going to store them? 
That's besides the point. Because if you could store 25 no, cars, you, got, you, you could got, buy 25 Taycans you, you, <laughs> here in Vancouver. Here, yeah. No, yeah. you just park them on the street no, and then get got, another one. No, you guys just got checkmated <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Would you rather have uh, one parking space? Well, you don't have to buy all of them at the same time. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's reasonable. You can all at that rate, figure with into how much it. money this you one's out of gas. You just leave it at the linearly. side of the road. Just yeah. put just put wraps on your Taycan with your sponsorship from D Brand, so you don't pay for them anyway. <laughs> Boom, mic drop. <laughs> this is why he runs the business. And Get all we your don't. stuff stolen because your your uh, trunk stays open all the time. Uh, that's user error. Yeah, that is. I don't user know. Error. I don't know if the keys as wacky as you're saying. It's not that wacky. Oh, I don't have them. Yvonne took them. Oh right. I wonder if she's breaking my car right now. Just, just get it. Just get twenty five <laughs> Acuras would fill our parking. W tip. Uh, I think one extra Acura would fill our parking. We're on the we're on the edge right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Sony Tech here. Blu rays have been console locked with daughter boards for every single PlayStation by law, and the PS five wasn't going to be the one to not adhere to that rule. In this case, it's not up to Sony. It's kind of uh, bringing back to our mm, earlier topic. So, but just because it's locked, does that mean that, well, hold on a second. No, I thought you could, on a PS1, oh, Blu-rays, Blu-rays, okay. So on a PS3, can you replace Blu-ray drive? So someone says, if your wife curbs your car, you pull out another one of your 25. Your oh, 25 just five wives or your 25 cars? <laughs> just just <laughs> leave it, sweetie. We've got more at home. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll grab Acura number four. Oh, this is the blue one. <laughs> the Vleur interior. It does require swapping the Blu-ray drive board from the old drive onto the replacement. But here's what I don't understand. Why isn't the board just in the external Blu-ray drive thing then? Like, couldn't it just be an authenticated, validated thing, and then it just plugs in via USB? I mean, the Xbox, whatever the crap, had a USB Blu-ray drive, didn't it? Xbox 360, USB Blu-ray. I thought so. You can also how to play Blu-ray disc on Xbox One and 360. If you haven't got one, get an external USB Blu-ray disc drive. Like, am I, am I missing something here? No, it had HD DVD. Okay, there you go. Never mind. My bad. Um, yeah, okay, fair enough. I, I hate it, and I feel like there would have to be some kind of a better solution, but if you, if you say it's necessary for reasons that are beyond Sony's control, then I retract my derision. I like how Linus is at an age where complicated names like iPad Pro 12.9 inch 6th generation, USB 3.2 generation 2x2, and Snapdragon 8 generation 3 don't deserve to be memorized in his head. What other names infuriate you? The biggest ones for me are not even necessarily the super long ones. The ones that make me really mad are the ones that are the same from one generation to the next. Mac Pro. No, no, no. That's f*** you. That's not, that's not helpful. How am I supposed to look up, how am I supposed to look up technical articles and specs and find information on this thing? It's ridiculous. It's like they don't want people to know about their products. Um, like I, I, I don't, I, and I, I, you know, again, I don't mind if there's a rhyme or reason to it. Like the A7N32-SLI Deluxe. Okay, it's uh, it's an A for AMD. It's seven for, you know, K seven it's uh actually i don't think there was an a7 see okay see look the the system works a7 would have been an amd platform motherboard for the k7 which means there was no sli because that was an agp platform it would have been the a8 n32 sli deluxe uh so 32 if i recall correctly referred to the 2x16 pcie lanes uh so it would have been an a7n uh 8x something f for the previous generation because you would have had um just an, an agp slot and then deluxe generally refers to the slightly higher tier board which has like more usb or e sata or like sata ports or you know firewire or whatever the case may be um like as, as long as there's a as long as there's a rhyme or a reason to it i don't mind but non-adherence to a standard naming scheme upsets me a lot like um you know or skipping a random generation 
you know, when they just skipped Ryzen 4000. Uh, even even Why? like when NVIDIA Stop. would be like, this generation is Best Buy exclusive, it felt like skipping it. Yeah, well, it's that, just as bad. That's because it was like, yeah. or, or it, it means that it wasn't They're a generation, really it wasn't a product lineup. Yeah, yeah. Hey, LDL, a few WAN meets ago, you talked about silicon fabs. How hard do you think it would be for a developing country like India to set up their own silicon fab as good as TSMC and Samsung have? Impossible. And I don't even mean that as like a knock against India. I just mean if you don't have the expertise, because it's not about access to the water or like the equipment from ASML. Um, it's about expertise. It's about intellectual property. Like if you are not TSMC, Samsung, Global Foundries, or Intel, um, you're not building a fab at the tier of, of those guys. And even those guys, uh, you know, even the second place fab is, is significantly different in terms of its approach and capabilities compared to mm -hmm. the first place fab. You know, even if you're on the same node, I mean, we've seen this time and time again with Samsung being on the same node as TSMC, but their power characteristics suck or whatever the case may be. Um, it's, it's as much black magic as it is science at that point. And I just don't think it's, um, I just don't think it's realistic. I mean, China's trying. And they are achieving some pretty amazing stuff over there. But no, they're not on the same level as TSMC and Samsung, at least not yet. Yeah, yeah this is a good point. Even TSMC, uh, Space Razor brings this up in Floatplane Chat. Even TSMC is having trouble building a fab like TSMC. They're trying to build one in the U.S. and they can't find a workforce for it. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Bern, Bern, sorry, another interruption. Bernie said India is launching ro rockets, so it seems it's easier to put something in space. Oh my goodness! It seems oh. it's easier to put something sorry. in space <laughs> than make a chip. Well, yeah, they've uh, been putting rockets in space since the '60s. Exactly. Like, they've made it more like cost back when computers and stuff. were woven together by hand, like burning fuel and like rocketing something into space. Very complicated. But it's more of like a mechanical engineering problem and less of like a, a nano manufacturing problem. Yeah, yeah. All right, next up. Linus, I've been meaning to ask you, since you have your computer on a server rack instead of in your room, how do you turn your PC on remotely? I get up off my lazy gamer butt and uh, <laughs> go turn it on. It sucks. I, I'm, I've been meaning to I've been meaning to implement something that is an upcoming video. There's a lot of different options. There's little key fobs that you can um, attach to like a relay board to your power switch. There's uh, Pi KVM. There's uh, Magic Packets. As, as unreliable as I've found that over the years, there's there's actually you can just run a wire. You can actually run an incredibly long wire and just put your power button wherever it turns out we've tested it i just uh, i think jake tried like a hundred foot spool or something like that <laughs> and it totally worked you just bridge the contact and it turns on the motherboard so i just haven't gotten around to it last one the curated hey lld after all these years of gaming what do you guys think is the greatest game of all time and why okay is this this is a very loaded like the most or is this what we think the is greatest. the greatest game but is it the greatest for me or is it the greatest for everyone what do you think i think i think it's what do you think is the greatest game of all time for me it's no. what do you think is the greatest game of all time but is this my favorite game no it's the, the game that no, i the think greatest is the greatest game the greatest me? game the greatest game of all time are you being are you being intentionally obtuse no i think <laughs> it's not very complicated luke i have something that i think is the greatest game okay then let's hear it but i don't recommend that anyone plays Quit it stalin you communist wow <laughs> he our, ding. our he bell ding. look at him he got the dig Oh my goodness, come on. Um Skyrim, no. Oh. <laughs> right? Well we're we're um, we're checking them off the list. I don't know. I don't know. What a I'll have to look that up on Steam. Yeah, it's highly rated. Yeah. Ninety eight Metacritic. <laughs> um I mean my my personal one is Morrowind, but is that the greatest game? It's my favorite one. But I, think, I don't know if it's the greatest game. I think it'd be easier to define what 
metric a greatest game would be measured as? Morrowind inspired me the most. It made me care about game development. It made me care about what went into, uh, what is it called? Foley even like it, 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 yeah, it made me care about a lot of things more than I had ever even considered in the past, like before Morrowind. Thank you for mentioning Foley. Yeah. Um, You'd never guess it, because man, does that game have some... I was not expecting you to say Morrowind, and <laughs> yeah. the Foley was inspiring. Uh, that's uh, that's messed up. Um, but, like, do you know... Do you know? Yeah, I understand, yeah. But this is what I'm saying, like, I don't know if it's the greatest game, it just hit me really hard. Um, but here's a random little tidbit. Do you know the, the sound of warthogs hitting things? Do you know what that was? Mm-hmm. They were throwing Xboxes on the ground. Oh my, the Halo... Don't... Those guys are on another level. Whoever, I don't, I, I should really figure out and, and worship them more, but those guys are amazing. I got yeah. really, I got really into, I was like thinking I might want to do that. And then I realized like four people have that job and I was like, never mind. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's an incredibly weird and creative field and nothing that you hear in games is what you think it is. To be clear, when I say that I've been like, oh, maybe I should do that to probably pretty much everything in the yeah. world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's not a unique thing. Um, uh, but yeah. So you're going with Morrowind? I feel like it's a cop-out because it's just my favorite game. Um, but probably. I, f- I feel like you need to define the, the greatness aspect here. Oh, yeah. It, I, this is obviously an impossible question yeah. to answer. I just enjoyed watching you squirm. <laughs> Um, I, I would be really hard for me to come up with one because, you know, when I think greatness, uh, you know, I think influence. Right. So obviously you have to start talking about games like Pong or Tetris or Half-Life or, you know, whatever else. But those aren't games that I enjoyed. They were not part of my childhood. They were not formative for me. You know, for me, if I was trying to think greatest, you know, something like a Final Fantasy VI, I think it has a great story, great music. Like if we talk about a complete game. um, If I tried to put like, I'm really enjoying it. It's really good. If I try to put myself back in when that game was released, holy hell, dude. Yeah, it was it was great. Oh yeah, um, and that's another thing too. Like, do we consider it being a product of its time? Like, I I would make the argument that Super Mario World is basically a perfect game. Tell me something to improve about it. Didn't that game more or less single handedly save at home gaming? You could make that argument, um, although or consoles at least. The NES had already been very successful. Was it? Okay. Yeah. The NES was already very successful, but Super Mario World was a a, a once in a a generation of games um, game. Like it was incredible. The music, the the artwork, the gameplay, it was so good. Um, You know, I I personally have a really, really um, soft spot for Far Cry for, for the first one. Uh, the the what was really innovative Not at many the time played them surprisingly but they're really they? going, going you mean the first one uh i count one and two Two was crap. As early Far Cries. I wasn't saying it was good. Oh, I'm just saying not many people played either of those. Oh, yeah, no. Um, But they're really interesting, both of them, to look back at 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 from a tech perspective. Far Cry 1 came out of absolutely nowhere. At a time when everyone was waiting for... um, what What was the stupid Doom game at the time? I forget. Doom... Doom Ultimate. I've, I've, I don't Something remember like what. I, I think it ended up being a bit of a uh, Doom starter. Yeah, Doom Games listed. Uh, Doom I've not used an Amiga, but they're super cool. Doom was fine. It was just flashlight jokes, you know? Uh, main series. Here we right. go. Uh, Doom 2, Doom 64, Doom 3. That was the one. Uh, yeah, so everyone was waiting with bated breath for Doom 3 Half Life 2. And then Far Cry beat them to market by like six months or something like that and was just out of nowhere, I, in my opinion, the best of the three. And I played through all three of them. Ooh. Oh, that's a dangerous thing to say. Ooh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in here. Doom 3 was trash. He said something not amazing about Half-Life. Oh, you're going to oh, upset no. the internet. Oh, no. Actually, I've heard dissenting opinions about Half-Life, so. It was fun. 
you could approach it any way you wanted. There was boats and vehicles, and it was beautiful. You were in this lush, beautiful environment. Uh, you, you were this colorful character. You're like basically like a like a like a a, a, a swashbuckler smuggler like Chad. Um, like you just it just had so much personality. Um, Far Cry One is awesome and yeah there you you heard me say it uh, and it was it was not open world yet right like we yeah. hadn't we hadn't hit open yeah. world gaming yet but the idea that you just kind of had a marker on your map and you go and get there however you want in the on these giant maps the maps were enormous no loading screens that was crazy at the time that was awesome yeah, uh, the the open world nature of yeah. Far Cry Three was actually really good, and then Ubisoft decided to spend the next uh, what would that have even been decade, decade and a half, yeah. uh, making the exact same game with a different skin on it, and now people hate it, which sucks because if you go back and play Far Cry Three, I guarantee you it's trash, but I think it's trash because it's been played out so hard. Right. Yep. Um, I yeah. see people talking about Max Payne. I have not played Max Payne. I need to. I've only played a demo, and it was very fun. Yeah, I, I really, back. I really need to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I get. Yeah. I, but then you know, I, I've already said before. Like, if I'm being honest with myself, taking off the rose-colored lenses, I think Breath of the Wild is the best game I've ever played. Like, it's nothing has made me like that thing you're talking about before. The just spontaneous. Um, exploration. Yeah, nothing has made me feel like that the way and been and been as rewarding as Breath of the Wild. So there's games where you'll you'll want you'll want to explore, but uh, it turns out this is actually a really small town. There's only like eight people to talk to, and most of them don't like give you a quest or or fulfill you in any way. Oh, um, you'd hate Starfield. <laughs> oh, <All right. laughs> yeah. yeah. My cool. my thoughts have continuously evolved and gotten more negative about that game as time has gone on. I my my overall, if I had to try to condense my entire review into one little thing. It would, it would be, be like sometimes. Sometimes creativity needs bounds. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's that's an interesting take. And I haven't even touched on anything multiplayer. Like I think there's probably a lot of people who would say, "Yeah, Counter Strike is the greatest game of all time." Incredible staying power. It's 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 closer to chess than it is to like your like something like a Far Cry where it's like open ended or whatever it's like it's less about there's economy the game being and, changing and yeah. it's more about the game being a constant and the players changing and i that that in itself is the mark of a great game such a wildly difficult thing to accomplish is that it's exactly is easy to easy to learn impossible to master right like it's um, and so, yeah, you could make, I think you could I think make, if we want to go down these strains, I think Eve should be mentioned. I was about to say, wow. Yeah. I think, I think that to not mention an MMO in a list of greatest games is a huge. EverQuest, Eve, and WoW, I think almost each individually deserve some type of accolade in this pile. And because it was, it was, I think you could make the argument, I will make the argument that. MMOs made gaming more accessible at a time when people were focused on gameplay styles that were only really accessible to um, oh, they're social a, a more a more male audience um, mm -hmm. a more male you know internet citizen audience like I didn't know any gamer girls until well yeah it, it anyone it seemed like could enjoy wow and you know was part of it that it was engineered to be digital crack cocaine sure <laughs> was it created by the government and you know spread <laughs> to subdue the populace maybe uh, <laughs> but uh, i feel like there's but um... that's great that's a that's that's a great thing they achieved to i mean what were their concurrent subscribers at their peak like f over 50 million or something like that. Like know. it was a ton. Like for something to have that kind of influence, there's a dedicated South Park episode about it. Like, and that was at South Park's peak in terms of cultural sway. 
12 million. But you got to understand how many less people were even on the internet at all. It was only 12 million peak? I think so. That can't be right. I mean, it, it could definitely be wrong. That's just what I got. 12 million Wrath of the Lich King, which I believe was the peak, wow, okay. peaked at 12 million subscribers. But okay, hold on. Remember, so few people had computers that could even run it. Yeah, that's true. I knew people back then that didn't have the internet at home, or they were still on like genuine put the phone on the thing dial up. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, that's true. Like I my computer when WoW first came out, um, when I played back in two thousand and four, if I wanted to raid I had to point my camera at the wall because the game was unplayable if I didn't do that. I couldn't look at the fight that was happening and I had to just like hope and I would get like three to four FPS. I'm not even kidding. Wow. <laughs> so, I, yeah, like it was not very accessible in regards to technological requirements. I see a lot of people talking about just like genre defining, you know, games like something like a Street Fighter. What has had the staying power of Street Fighter? Um, um, yeah, no, Street Fighter is older than Counter Strike by a long shot. You're you're right, but I wonder what the gap is. It's um, big. Fighter. Wait, was that arcade before console? Oh yeah, baby. Oof. Okay, yeah, 1987 for yep. Street Fighter. I, I forgot it would have been arcade first. And like you could you could say, oh yeah, Tetris, you know, maintains relevance today. But I I would argue Street Fighter and its inspirational clones or like it's the clones that it inspired have had a longer period of relevance than almost anything else like people still freaking play street fighter and people were freaking playing street fighter back in the late 1980s all right i gotta bring one up 2000 for yeah hit me runescape i mean you talked about how wow was taking cues from runescape's hard yep. mode and iron mode like, that is such a distilled experience. That's happening now. Yeah, we talk about number go up and, like, do thing, number go up, get to 99, right? Yep. RuneScape is such a distilled experience for that type of gameplay loop, which everything else is built on, in and my And the opinion. fact that people still play RuneScape... It is so perfectly uh, addictive, called, the original levels one. of number go up, that people still play it. I mean, I think that there's there's arguments to be made for Warcraft 2, Starcraft, Warcraft 3, Warcraft any one 3. of them. Modding, Warcraft 3 modding. <sighs> well, we don't got forget, Dota, Starcraft, mo modding was a big thing in Starcraft oh, yeah. as well. So Warcraft 2, you had Warcraft custom maps. Warcraft 3 was crazy for modding. The way that the map editor evolved, that's the reason I brought up all three of them. Because in Warcraft 2, you could create custom scenarios. But in Starcraft, you could do a bunch of scripting. Because the campaigns had a bunch of scripting and they basically made, as far as I can tell, made that. the map editor functional like their own tools. But Warcraft 3, A, made it more accessible and B, I think the general internet dwelling population was getting more code savvy. Yeah. And it was just this, this perfect storm moment of, of incredible creativity meets incredible tools and, and Dota was born. Yeah, right? and lots of other stuff. Lots of other stuff. I mean, tower defense yep. kind of existed, but is an entire genre of gaming now. Yeah. And really, from as, as far as I can tell, had its um, inflection point with Warcraft 3. Like, I know there were tower defense mods for Starcraft, and I know there was stuff before that. But Warcraft 3, man, Warcraft tower 3 defense was... was yeah. Huge. That was the hockey stick moment for custom games. Um, despite them existing significantly beforehand, Warcraft 3 was crazy. I, I remember there was a pretty significant period of time where all my friends would just play Warcraft 3 custom games and nothing else. And oh, there yeah. was a big range. That was a whole we'd, summer for me. We'd play Dota. We'd play Winter Mall Wars. I used to love Winter Mall Wars. Yep. Winter Mall was a very good TD. Winter Mall Wars was a versus TD. We had to fight each other. So cool. So much fun. And all these crazy strategies of how you balance your economy it's got, stuff. It's got built-in multiplayer right. too, right? Yeah. Like did, it just comes with multiplayer. Yeah. Did we ever play that Risk map for Supreme Commander? I remember talking about it. I don't know if we... Played. Oh, it's, it's really fun. I feel like we might have, but I don't know. Anyway. That is the last of my curated. Oh. I'm, I'm glad that There's one went for so long. Yeah, yeah, lots of potentials. Can you start curating them or just reading them out? Pick one. Why do I not have the interface open? Okay, well, I don't have the dashboard, so you guys feel free to... Um, okay. 
do stuff. Uh, with augmented reality being able to be used on even lower tier work devices like the Samsung X Cover Pro, what are some ways you foresee AR being used in business? For example, Walmart uses VizPick for keeping logs of stock. Ugh, training is probably the biggest one for me. Like I, uh, or or just, um, you know, remotely instructing someone, like imagine for a second, if uh, someone the size of Walmart, right? With all your dozens or hundreds of stores or whatever it is, instead of having like a trained technician in every region for how to fix your POS terminals, if you could just have half a dozen of them sitting at a central location that can instruct any idiot on how to fix something, I, I, I could see that being absolutely huge. Um, I, I, I think we are just beginning to imagine all the ways that AR is going to, is going to change our lives. I, uh, that could be a whole WAN show, but yeah, everything. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's already being used in a big way, and it's just the beginning. Hi, LLD. I work in the bioinformatics. Would you consider some sort of collaboration to show people how HPC clusters or servers are actually used and what's actually meant by scientific applications in biology? I'd love to, but the challenge with that is a lot of the time the work that's being done is not very visual and it doesn't translate well to a visual medium like video. So there have been situations where we've wanted to collaborate with industries um, or, or like educational institutions on, you know, just talking about HPC or, um, you know, data visualization or not data or, or like, um, you know, high end visualization, um, applications. Like uh, there was this one where they, they try to extract the oil and gas from sunken ships from like world war two to keep it from leaking out into the ocean. And also it's like worth money, I guess, and stuff. Um, and we wanted to do something with them and it just like, it didn't really work because the only way for us to do it would be to like go out on a ship into the Atlantic ocean. Otherwise we're just talking about, and, and like, it's so cool By because the way, they would do this like, like visualization, like under the ocean thing. I will volunteer my time. Um, it's too much time. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was like, it was like over a you week to be out just to like, get to the site because uh, yeah and like there's no guarantee things will go well because it's like Lots ocean exploration the ocean yeah yeah so like yeah. i forbid it yeah uh, <laughs> fair enough <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hello lld buying my first gift card to save up for shipping linus what happened to your diy water cooling bed always curious if you still use or stayed with the eight sleep mattress is I still, it any good i still use the eight sleep no the the diy water cooling bed was hilarious but it was not it was not real <laughs> anymore or you just want to start reading them off i just just uh sure let's just go for it just sure. do it do it you coward here, here I'm, I'm trying to curate things i just curated one. Oh my god we have a system why didn't you use the controlled atmospheric chamber to test the subambient PC? Wouldn't humidity control be helpful to ensure as little moisture buildup as possible? Our humidity control wasn't working yet at that point. Oh. In fact, while it was working for a while, it is now broken again because the housing on the pump for the, the water loop failed. Right as we were filming a video this week on the indestructible laptop that Keith from the, uh, the tech shop sold me. So uh, we'll get back to you on that, <laughs> basically. Howdy, LLD. I have a one and a half year old son and wanted to see what baby steps I can take to get them to slowly start gaming. Any specific games or activities that would be helpful? Love gaming is highly addictive and, and a high stimulation activity. You won't need not... to do anything to get them gaming. <laughs> they will game uh, whether you like it or not. They'll do anything that you do, like it or not. Um, so... You know, keep that in mind with all your bad habits um, <laughs> and try to get them to do other things. Um, one of the things that I did was I told my kids that they weren't allowed to play. I, I play RPG games um, and whenever they would see me playing one, uh, I think Bravely Default was the one that I, I did this with uh, for my first kid. And he was like, I want to play that. Can I play that game? I go, no, you won't enjoy it until you can read. So learn to read and then you can play. Motivate kids. You gotta, you gotta incentivize them. Gaming should be a carrot, not an end goal. Yep. I don't even have kids, and I agree thoroughly. 
Hey, LLD, curious as to why you think computer repair shops are a bad idea. As somebody who has run their own for the past decade, somewhat successfully, uh, Gen X and Z are quite Luddite. Um, it's not that I think they're a bad idea. It's that I think they're an extremely challenging business, which yes. I'm sure you, I'm sure you wouldn't disagree with. Um, and the repair aspect is by far the most lucrative. The one that I'm constantly discouraging people from is the one where they think they're just going to become a system integrator. That is a brutal business where it's extremely difficult to come up with any kind of unique value proposition. And if you don't have a unique value proposition, why should I buy from you instead of one of the hundred other system integrators that can buy parts at Newegg and assemble them for me? Um, that's, that's where I, I really think people are going to run into challenges. Um, honestly, if I wanted to get into the computer shop business though, right now, I don't even know that I would start one. I think that what I would rather do is like inherit one or like, you know, try to try to buy one from the owner or something like that. I think that would be a, a better bet. So you have that established clientele that it's least, that is at least used to you being there. Um, because I think it'd be really hard to break out as a brand new computer repair shop without any kind of established trust. Hi, LLD. Business question. Could you shed light on how sourcing for LTT Labs differs from sourcing for Creator Warehouse from a supply chain and operations perspective? I have no idea. That's the goal. That's <laughs> And last one. Hi, Linus. At LTX, I got the 10 million subscriber case, and I want to see if there's any possibility I could buy the play button PC that came with it also. Plan to build a top-of-the-line PC inside it. Oh, I'm so sorry, but nope. I was willing to bid adieu to the, uh, like the, 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 the case for it, but as a YouTuber, my 10 million yeah, subscriber diamond happening. play button is one of my most prized possessions. Um, and I just don't see any conceivable way that I could part with it. But thank you for that donation that um, helped some sick kids. Yeah. And thanks for watching The Wan Show. Yeah. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Luke's going down in super checks. <laughs> Probably. Bye! I have to pee! Alright, super checks must go wherever you need to be is not as important as super checks. Oh, look up. Don't you worry. Ah. That's fine. We can help lock we up because we yeah. have to. We have to go get a thing for me to stand on anyway. I'm not tall enough to play with Luke. Okay. Well, because I need the game to be boosted. <laughs> You're too weird. Oh no! I wish.